Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Man in American Comics, Start Regenerative Healing Factor. Chapter 61. Anyone who has a dream is amazing. Determined to become a superhero, little Peter soon plunged into the ocean of knowledge. I have to admit that there is indeed a big difference between geniuses and ordinary people. Without any guidance from anyone, little Peter picked up the physics books and started to learn by himself. Unexpectedly, he did not read the most basic textbooks, but skipped a few stages and started learning, because those he already knew the basic theoretical knowledge. Great job, my little Peter. Lu Chuang nodded in satisfaction, and he was not worried that this would affect little Peter's normal studies. Because he found that elementary school students in America are really free. After school at 3 p.m. every day, the school basically does not assign any tasks, so the elementary school students have a lot of time to play and play. Only those rich families will hire private education for their children, perform elite teaching, and little Peter's family environment, Lu Chuang also understands. His parents died, and he was adopted by his uncle and aunt. However, not long after, his uncle also died in an act of righteousness. Yes, it was the uncle who said, with greater ability, comes greater responsibility, brother said. In short, only Aunt May is left in little Peter's family, and Aunt May has limited economic ability and cannot afford expensive private education at all, so little Peter has a lot of time to allocate freely. For example, two hours to study physics, two hours to study engineering, two hours to frantically brush up on exercises, three years of college entrance examination and five years of simulation, Lu Chuang thinks this time allocation is very reasonable. Lu Chuang didn't disturb little Peter's study, and walked into the garage with the happy fat house water. Now that the technicians have found it, he should also look for the blueprints for making the super battle suit. As for where to find the super battle suit crafting blueprint. In this regard, Lu Chuang has long had an idea. But before that, he needs to make some advanced preparations. Comma. That night, Stoke Group Industrial Zone, District Number. 16. A blonde and capable white-collar woman came in, followed by several men in black uniforms. A group of people walked quickly into the deepest part of the industrial area and came to an iron gate. The blonde woman tried to swipe her card in, but found that it failed. She looked at a middle-aged man behind her in a panic. Agent Phil Coulson, here it is, but my card won't work. Phil Coulson didn't speak, he directly took out a small device and installed it on the lock of the iron door, then led the blonde woman back a few steps. Boom, the door lock was instantly blown open. Holding a pistol, Phil Coulson was the first to push open the iron door and walked in, followed by several men in black. Judging from their gun-holding postures, it was obvious that they had received the most professional training. Immediately afterwards, they saw a pair of rough steel armor, which seemed to be assembled from various fragments, and Phil Coulson said with a serious expression, Miss Potts, it is indeed as you said, Obadestine is the man behind the kidnapping of Tony Stark, and he's also making steel armor. While speaking, Phil Coulson gestured to his colleagues with his eyes. They are from the Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Bureau, referred to as SHIELD, an agent organization that is responsible for handling some special incidents, and they are all agents of SHIELD. This time, the mission is to cooperate with Tony Stark's assistant to arrest Obadri Stan as a dangerous man. But their mission wasn't just to capture Obadestine. There is one more important thing, that is to get this steel armor technical drawing. Then protect its technology. Yes, protect it. After all, there are too many problems involved in this technology, and they must not let some people with bad intentions get it, so they must protect it. As for the place of protection, don't think too much about it, of course it is their shield, because there is no place that is safer than their shield. It doesn't matter whether other people believe it or not, they do believe it anyway. Following a cue from Phil Coulson, several shield agents immediately dispersed to search for the technical blueprints of the steel armor. Ah, just then, they suddenly heard Potts screaming. Following the prestige, they saw two rays of light glowing in the dark corner. With the sound of mechanical operation, the outline of a huge monster gradually became clear. A steel titan more than three meters high appeared in front of their eyes, exuding a pervasive glow. The cold steel breath. Potts didn't sit on the ground with frightened legs like the heroine in the movie, but ran out screaming all the way. I don't know how she did it while wearing high heels. 
Seeing this giant steel armor, Phil Coulson instantly thought of the broken steel armor just now. Isn't this just an enlarged version of plagiarism? Boom, boom, boom. Without thinking about it, Phil Coulson and several S.H.I.E.L.D. agents immediately shot at the giant steel armor. Their bullets, however, only spattered a spark on the steel casing and did no harm. And their actions seemed to have angered this ferocious steel beast. The huge figure suddenly rioted and rushed to their position. Because the aisle of the research institute was too narrow, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent standing at the front had no time to dodge, and the whole person directly was thrown against the wall. Seeing that the strength of the two sides was not at the same level at all, Phil Coulson made a decisive decision and immediately jumped over the fence of the passage to the side, narrowly avoiding the impact of the giant steel armor. Fortunately, this pair of giant steel armor didn't pay attention to his intentions. The pair of powerful steel giant palms directly tore through the ceiling above, and dazzling flames emerged from the soles of the feet, driving the huge body from the ground to the ground. It's exaggerated. Looking at the hole in the ceiling, Phil Coulson stood up awkwardly. He didn't expect that this mission would be so thrilling, and he needed to face such a terrifying steel monster, the power of which was simply beyond the reach of ordinary people. Glancing at the corpses of his colleagues, Phil Coulson exhaled slowly. Years of working as an agent made him used to such scenes, he quickly suppressed his emotions, and looked at the two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents who also avoided the impact. You guys continue to search for the technical blueprint of the steel armor, and I will report to the director. Bubiu, accompanied by a slight gunshot, two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents suddenly fell before Phil Coulson's eyes. Phil Coulson's pupils shrank suddenly, and he quickly drew his gun and pointed it backwards. I saw a figure slowly walking out of the dark shadows. Tony Stark, to be precise, it was a Tony Stark head cut out from nowhere, and then pasted on a mask, disguised as Tony Stark in such a way that an idiot could see it. Who are you? Phil Coulson gripped his pistol tightly and asked with a vigilant face. Liu Chuang, who was wearing a mask, said in a low voice, as you can see, I am Tony Stark. Phil Coulson, if you didn't say it, I really didn't see it. At this moment, the two sides are in a state of intense confrontation. Phil Coulson stared at Liu Chuang closely. This attacker was able to quietly eliminate two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. His strength should not be underestimated, but he is a high-level agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. after all, and his emotional changes will not be shown on his face. He intends to put some pressure on Liu Chuang in such a confrontational state, so as to find a flaw and kill him. And Liu Chuang also stared at Phil Coulson for a long time. Suddenly, he said suddenly, come closer, I think you look familiar. Phil Coulson frowned, did the other party know him? After thinking for a while, Phil Coulson took a step forward, because there is more light here, which is convenient for him to observe. Seeing the light hitting the top of Phil Coulson's head, Liu Chuang's expression suddenly enlightened. This hairline, you're Phil Coulson. Quote dot 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 quote. Phil Coulson was silent, he couldn't understand why Liu Chuang could recognize himself through the hairline. When did the hairline become a sign to recognize him? Here Liu Chuang has already recognized the identity of Phil Coulson, this S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who has made guest appearances all over the world and can meet any major event, especially the iconic hairline, it is difficult for Liu Chuang not to recognize him. Seeing that he is a familiar character, Liu Chuang took the lead in expressing his friendliness, I have no malicious intentions. It was just an anesthesia injection. They will wake up after a while. My gun is a kind gun. It can't kill people. Hearing Liu Chuang's words, Phil Coulson glanced at the two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, and could indeed see and breathe. Seeing this, Phil Coulson's heart moved slightly. Since it was just an anesthesia injection, he didn't need to worry about the consequences of shooting, at most he was just anesthetized. At this time, Liu Chuang took out another pistol. This is my pistol, don't worry, it's full of real bullets, I guarantee you can die completely. Phil Coulson immediately dropped the idea in his head. He felt that this guy was full of malice, and he must not act rashly. However, Phil Coulson didn't want to continue this stalemate. After all, he didn't know when the giant armor would come back. Now was the best time for him to look for the steel armor design drawings, and he didn't want to waste it like this. Since you have no malice, what is your purpose? Whatever your purpose is, I am what it is. Phil Coulson said without hesitation, We are here to capture Obedestine. Liu Chuang nodded seriously. Coincidentally, I'm also here to arrest Obedestine. 
Quote, dot, 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 quote. The two looked at each other, and they were sure that the other party came for the steel armor design blueprint. After a moment of silence, Lu Chuang suddenly proposed, since everyone is here to arrest Obedestin, why don't we search for Obedestin here together? Facing the black muzzle of the gun, Phil Coulson pretended to think about it. Can. When they said this, they all tacitly ignored the giant steel armor that just ran out. After all, what they were looking for was Obedestin, so what did they have to do with the giant steel armor? Ever since, the two pointed guns at each other, and began to search for the blueprint of the steel armor named Obedestin in the research institute. When passing by the broken steel armor, Lu Chuang deliberately checked it with the game system. Open black lens bracket target does not meet the conditions close black lens bracket. No accident, this pair of steel armor does not meet the requirements at all. After about five minutes, the two finally found a computer in the corner of the research institute, which showed that a password was required, and it seemed that there was a high probability that the design drawings of the steel armor were recorded in it. In an instant, the two looked at each other at the same time. Liu Chuang coughed. Well, my legs are a little numb, and I need to rest here for a while. You don't need to worry about me. It's more important to catch this dangerous guy, Obedestine. Phil Coulson didn't intend to move, and smiled gently, it's okay, I can have someone take you out first, as long as I arrest Obedestine here. Hypocritical. Asterisk. The two cursed inwardly. Liu Chuang looked at the password on the display screen, and suggested, I think it is indeed important to arrest Obedestine, but it is also important to find evidence of Obedestine's crime, do you mind if I check this computer? Quote. Do you know the password? I don't know, but I'm a well-known computer genius in the community, and a mere six-digit password can't trouble me at all. Liu Chuang's tone was full of confidence. This is still a technical person. Phil Coulson made a precise judgment in an instant, and a brainstorm was set off in his mind. He was collecting as much information as possible on the other party, so as to infer what organization the other party might be from. This is the routine operation of their agent. I don't mind. After all, Obedestine's criminal evidence is also very important. Phil Coulson said righteously. Liu Chuang let out a hush inwardly, nodded on the surface, and pressed the keyboard very solemnly. 123,456. Wrong password. Phil Coulson. Liu Chuang said in disbelief, how is it possible? Phil Coulson almost lost his grip on the pistol. How surprised are you, no one would set such a simple password. Wait, I think it might be six zeros. This is my bank card password. Liu Chuang refused to give up and wanted to continue trying to crack the password. Crackling. Just as Liu Chuang's attention was focused on the computer screen, a strong electric current suddenly flashed across his body, his body trembled violently a few times, and he fell straight down. Seeing Liu Chuang who was stunned, Phil Coulson breathed a sigh of relief and put away the electric shock device in his hand. Phil Coulson did not dare to let Liu Chuang continue to try, because he knew that the passwords of many security systems can only be entered three times at most, if Liu Chuang enters such weird numbers as six zeros and six sixes, his work tonight will be in vain. Phil Coulson chose not to kill Liu Chuang directly. He needs to bring this suspicious attacker back and find out why he came here. As far as he knew, this research institute was secretly established by Obedestine to study steel armor, and even their shield had just learned about it from Tony Stark's assistant. What did the other party learn from it? Channels are aware of the existence of this department. Due to the urgency of time, Phil Coulson took out a small instrument similar to a USB flash drive from his pocket and inserted it into the computer without wasting too much time. As a bunch of codes appeared, the password of the computer was quickly deciphered and unlocked. You still have a way, you actually untied it. A familiar voice came from behind. Phil Coulson was startled. He wanted to turn around but felt a chill in his thigh. He saw an anesthesia needle stuck firmly in his thigh. He turned his head with difficulty and saw Lu Chuang's figure. The other party wasn't in a coma at all. Phil Coulson's gradually drowsy eyes showed a trace of doubt. His electric shock device can release an electric current that is powerful enough to stun an adult in an instant. Come over. You. Don't blame me, it was you who didn't talk about Wood first. Liu Chuang spread his hands innocently, and Phil Coulson wanted to call for help, 
but he felt that his body was losing consciousness, and he didn't even have the strength to raise his hands, and soon fell into a coma. Lu Chuang checked the computer that unlocked the password, and sure enough, it was full of various data of the steel armor, including the design drawings of the steel armor. He couldn't help sighing in his heart. As expected of S.H.I.E.L.D., even the system of Stark Industries can be cracked. If it weren't for Phil Coulson's enthusiastic help, even if I found this computer, I would probably just stare blankly in the end. Thinking of this, Lu Chuang was full of gratitude to Phil Coulson. In return, he changed the posture of the unconscious Phil Coulson, and put the other's hands on his forehead, blocking the brain door that can reflect light under the light, and avoiding the embarrassment of the other party after being found. Then, Lu Chuang pulled out the instrument from Phil Coulson, and replaced it with the USB flash drive he brought. This little gadget bot from Weasel has no hips. After inserting the USB flash drive, Lu Chuang does not need to control it. The data in the computer starts to be automatically copied and pasted into the new hard drive. It only takes a few minutes to download it all. While downloading, Lu Chuang browsed the information on the steel armor. He found that this pair of giant steel armor named Iron Overlord was imitated from the Mark I that Tony Stark built in the cave in Afghanistan. Its technology is completely it's a fake that was ripped off from Mark I. Although there are some technical flaws, it is still of great reference value. At least it can provide a clear direction for Little Peter. However, there is still a core problem with the Iron Overlord armor that has not been resolved. That is the most important power supply system. You can guess without thinking about it. It will definitely consume a lot of energy to drive this pair of cumbersome giant steel armor. It will not work just by filling a large amount of fuel. You must have a durable and stable energy supply source. Lu Chuang thought of the big light bulb on Iron Man's chest, the small arc reactor that can provide 3 billion joules per second, but the problem is that the small arc reactor belongs to Tony Stark's personal technology, and it seems not easy to get it. Boom. At this time, the ceiling collapsed. Two human-shaped steel armors, one large and one small, fell from the sky. Sparks and lightning passed in front of Lu Chuang's eyes, crashing out of the outer wall of the research institute with unabated inertia. Through the huge hole in the institute, Lu Chuang could see the two steel armors rushing up the highway outside the Stark industrial area, and finally stopped in the middle of the crowd of vehicles. Looking carefully, that pair of steel armor with huge amounts of steel is exactly Iron King's armor, and the other pair of golden red steel armor, without thinking about it, must be Tony Stark's Mark III steel armor. Looking at the big dazzling light bulbs on the chests of the two steel armors, Lu Chuang raised his brows. Isn't that a coincidence, comma, on the expressway, everyone was stunned by such a sudden situation, and they didn't react until the Iron Overlord armor suddenly overturned the vehicle blocking the road. Suddenly, there was a burst of screams and horns on the highway. The Iron Overlord armor didn't pay attention to the panicked people, the mechanical eyes stared at the gold-red color steel armor in front of him, and a wild and wanton laughter came from inside the Iron Overlord armor. I love this outfit. Tony, look at your excellent masterpiece. You closed the weapons department and turned around to make even more powerful weapons. You are as hypocritical as your dead father. Shut up you are not qualified to mention him. After the mechanized processing of the armor, Tony Stark's voice became cold and calm, and no one noticed the tense look under his steel mask. At the moment, the small arc reactor on his chest was temporarily installed. Originally, the latest small arc reactor he made was taken away by Obaday. Now he is using an old version, and the energy in it has long been exhausted. Too much and his steel armor is the latest Mark III, which consumes far more energy than before. This amount of energy won't last long at all. If this continues, his steel armor is likely to break. Turn on the energy supply, and then he will completely lose his resistance ability. Boom. Just as Tony Stark was thinking of a solution, Iron King's armor was like a steel beast, roaring and rushing towards him, and the ground was smashed to pieces with terrifying force. Caught off guard, Tony Stark only had time to raise his arms to block. Boom, the two pairs of steel armor collided, making a dull crashing sound. Occupying the size advantage of the huge tonnage, the Iron Overlord armor easily knocked Tony Stark into the air, sending him flying more than 10 meters away. Before Tony Stark got up, he saw an anti-tank rocket rising from the steel back of the Iron King's armor. 
Under the lock of the optical sight, the anti-tank rocket blasted straight towards him with tail flames. Boom! Accompanied by huge amounts of explosions, the Mark III was blown into the sky, and then fell heavily to the ground. At this moment Tony Stark was in a very aggrieved mood. Smart, he could tell at a glance that the Iron Overlord armor in front of him was a shoddy fake. The color and shape were copied from his Mark I, and even the small arc reactor on his chest was directly snatched from him. Go! Damn plagiarists can't use their own brains. However, the most uncomfortable thing is that although he can find a lot of technical problems with Iron King's armor, his Mark III just can't do anything to the opponent. After all, the huge size of Iron Overlord armor is not empty. It just depends on the size and thickness of the armor to support the overall defense. In the case of insufficient energy, the firepower of the Mark III can't explode the turtle shell at all. Seeing the armor of the Iron King coming again, Tony Stark couldn't bear it. The original author was beaten on the ground by the plagiarist. Is there anything more frustrating than this? Boom! The golden red armor was blown away again. At this moment, the shell of the Mark III is full of damage marks, and Tony Stark is about to be puked up. He decided that he must have a whole big steel armor when he went back. Accompanied by the sound of heavy footsteps, the Iron King armor came in front of Tony Stark. The mechanical arm grabbed the leg of Mark III and smashed it back and forth. Tony Stark felt like a broken rag doll. Stop kneading. Looking at Tony Stark who was being beaten by himself, Obadiah's proud voice came from inside the armor. Although you came up with it first, mine is more advanced than you in every aspect. The corners of Tony Stark's mouth twitched. Maybe Obadiah is an excellent businessman, but he must have been insulated from scientists in his life. Which I can see that this turtle shell is more advanced than my Mark III. Iron King's armor slammed down, and his broad soles directly stepped on Mark III, as if he intended to crush Tony Stark to death. Feeling the pressure coming from his chest, Tony Stark hurriedly said, J-A-R-V-I-S, gather energy to your chest. Hearing his order, the artificial intelligence J-A-R-V-I-S installed on Mark III acted immediately, and the big light bulb on the chest quickly gathered light. Bang! Suddenly, a sniper bullet bypassed the Mark III and hit the head of the Iron Overlord armor with precision. The bullet exploded suddenly, and the heavy Iron Overlord armor was directly blasted away. And Tony Stark also used this to break free from the control, he was implicated by the explosion and flew up again, but this time he reacted quickly, the palms of his hands lit up, and he was floating in midair. Tony Stark was surprised. J-A-R-V-I-S, what's going on? The playback screen just now was displayed inside the mask, and J-A-R-V-I-S explained at the same time, Sir, it is a modified sniper bullet, which came from the direction of 12 o'clock. The moment before you hit you, the bullet suddenly turned and hit the target. The warhead produced a powerful explosive power, force. Bullet turns. Tony Stark blinked blankly. He can understand that the modified sniper bullets will explode, but what is the scientific principle of the bullet turning? However, the Iron Overlord armor over there has already climbed up. Under the bombardment of the sniper bullet, there were only a few scratches on the outer shell of the Iron Overlord armor, which did not affect the normal operation of the Iron Overlord armor at all. Obadiah didn't have the artificial intelligence assistance of J-A-R-V-I-S. He thought it was Tony Stark's attack just now. He looked at Tony Stark floating in the air and laughed wantonly. Not bad, improved, but I also improved something myself. As he said that, dazzling flames erupted from the soles of Iron Overlord armor, and he was about to lift up the heavy steel armor. Another shoddy copycat product. Gritting his teeth, Tony Stark ordered the J-A-R-V-I-S to blast off. Not to be outdone, Obadi followed closely behind, his legs sprayed like a rocket, emitting a large amount of black exhaust, blackening the people below. It's outrageous. Liu Chuang, who was squatting on the roof, put away his sniper rifle and muttered to himself. Beside him, an expensive video camera was quietly placed, and the lens was already aimed at the highway, recording all the scenes just now. Liu Chuang originally wanted to observe the performance of Tony Stark's Mark III, but after observing it, he realized that the steel armor was outrageous. Especially the black technology like shock absorption system. Under normal circumstances, if the steel armor has been bombed so many times, Tony Stark inside would have a concussion even if he didn't die. But Tony Stark is still alive and well, 
as if the blood tank of the character is the steel armor, as long as the steel armor is not rotten, he is destined to be unscathed, just like the explosive clothing in a certain game. The same is true for the Iron Overlord armor. Although it is a plagiarized product, the shock absorption system does not seem to be weak. When he takes it back to Peter, he can learn from it. The plagiarized version, among other things, will definitely catch Tony Stark on the spot pissed off. Definitely, he couldn't just sit back and watch Tony Stark get punched. If one was accidentally killed, wouldn't his achievement task be in vain, and his efforts during this period would be in vain. Liu Chuang picked up the camera, and when he looked up, he saw a golden red figure quickly falling towards him. Quote exclamation mark exclamation mark quote. Tony Stark tried his best to maintain his balance in the sky, and finally fell crookedly on the roof, causing countless flames on the ground, and finally stopped in front of Liu Chuang. Activate backup power. With the sound of JARVIS, the small arc reactor that had gradually dimmed turned on again. At the same time, JARVIS reminded, Mr., please pay attention to your front. Tony Stark looked up suspiciously, and saw a familiar face. To be honest, it was the first time that Tony Stark was frightened by his own face. The headshot of a magazine that he didn't know where was taken out was full of wrinkles, and two holes were cut out in his eyes, and he was looking at himself with his two eyes. Tony Stark hurriedly distanced himself, Who are you? Liu Chuang said seriously, As you can see, I am Tony Stark. Tony Stark, you are Tony Stark and who am I? Seeing the sniper rifle on Liu Chuang's back, Tony Stark instantly guessed that the other party was the one who shot just now. Since the bullet bypassed him and attacked Opity, and rescued him, his vigilance suddenly dropped a lot. Less, at least for now it doesn't appear to be the enemy. But just in case, Tony Stark did not take off the Mark III, but continued to maintain the basic operation of the Mark III with spare energy. Seeing that Liu Chuang was holding a camera in his hand, Tony Stark raised his eyebrows, what are you recording? Definitely recorded the scene of Tony Stark being hanged and beaten. This is a rare and precious picture. Liu Chuang said excitedly. When you become famous as Iron Man, I will play it 3,000 times in New York Square, especially the scene where you were smashed by that giant steel armor just now, I promise you, it will definitely be become an emoticon package in everyone's mobile phone. Tony Stark felt that he was still lacking in consideration. This guy is definitely an enemy, and a very hostile kind. You know it's me, Tony Stark frowned. At this time, he didn't take off Mark III, how did the other party know that he was Tony Stark? Liu Chuang pouted. How fresh, all the dogs in my neighborhood know you are Iron Man. Tony Stark looked disbelieving, in his opinion, he should have done a good job of keeping the secrecy. For this reason, he thought about it carefully. At present, the only people who know that he has steel armor are his good friend Colonel Rhodes, his assistant Potts, Obedestine, the many terrorists who kidnapped him before, and the many detectives from the King's Bureau. Member. Quote dot dot dot. Well, I admit that there is a small problem with my confidentiality work. Tony Stark generously admitted that it is impossible to deny it with his flamboyant personality. He doesn't care how many people know about his identity. What trouble? But I'm curious, what is the Iron Man you're talking about? Perhaps because he felt that there was no threat of Iron Man's armor, Tony Stark felt very relaxed. He noticed that Liu Chuang kept mentioning the name Iron Man. For some reason, he felt that this name seemed to be particularly destined for him. Liu Chuang explained, Shouldn't a superhero have a superhero name? I think the name Iron Man is quite suitable for you. If you don't think it's suitable, why not call it Optimus Prime? I think this name is the name. Iron Man is a nice name. Tony Stark directly interrupted Liu Chuang's words, and told JARVIS, JARVIS, register this name, and this name will be mine from now on. Liu Chuang was startled, is this the decisiveness of capitalism? Seeing what Tony Stark did, Liu Chuang suddenly had a bold idea. If you register the titles of Green Titan, Black Widow, and Hawkeye in advance, and when these superheroes become popular in the future, you can open a store with these names, such as a Green Titan hat shop, and use these superhero signs to do business. Don't you want to make a lot of money? Liu Chuang thought about it, but reluctantly gave up this tempting idea. The main reason is that those superheroes will smash his store after they know about it, and directly stage an Avengers in his store. 
Seeing that Liu Chuang was still videotaping, Tony Stark said in a bad tone, Although I like the name you gave me very much, I want to remind you that your video has seriously violated my portrait rights, and I can ask you to your lawyer sued you for infringement. Liu Chuang said disdainfully, It's as if someone doesn't have a lawyer, BDFH, one of my lawyers can beat your lawyers a hundred times, and the process doesn't take a breather. As long as he sends lawyer ma, beating a hundred people is really not a problem. Tony Stark's eyes widened. For the first time in his life, he saw someone more arrogant than himself. It is no exaggeration to say that his legal team is definitely the top legal team in America. He doesn't think that the other party's lawyers can beat his own legal team, and he said that one can beat a hundred lawyers. What kind of joke are you talking about? Just when Tony Stark was about to refute, he saw Liu Chuang suddenly turned his head and ran away, not forgetting to point the camera in his direction while running. Before Tony Stark could react, he heard a heavy bang behind him. Tony Stark just turned his head and saw the huge figure in Iron King's armor and the mechanical arm that could grab his leg. Tony Stark. All of a sudden, Tony Stark lost control of his whole body, and when he was grabbed by the Iron King's armor, he was thrown indiscriminately. JARVIS kept reporting. The left arm is severely damaged, most of the weapons are disabled. Incendiary bomb. Tony Stark roared, and Mark III's legs shot out a lot of flames in an instant. The scorching heat burned the Iron King's armor, forcing the Iron King's armor to loosen its arms, and it was only then that Stark struggled to break free. JARVIS did not forget to remind. Sir, there is only 2% of the spare energy left, which can barely maintain the small arc reactor in your chest. If it is reduced to the lowest value, the small arc reactor will immediately lose its function. The iron sheet in your body there is a 78% chance of flowing into the heart. I know, Tony Stark didn't know how dangerous his situation was, and he might die at any time. Being in trouble, he had long forgotten the existence of Lu Chuang. Taking advantage of the smoke from the incendiary bomb, Tony Stark immediately contacted his most trusted assistant, Potts, go to the center console and turn on all the circuits, and I will tell you when I leave the roof, and then you press the switch switch button. Pot's tone was a little nervous, what do you want to do? I'm going to blow up this place, otherwise there is no way to solve Opadri. After notifying Pot's, Tony Stark jumped on the Iron King armor at the right time. Under the analysis of JARVIS, he quickly found the gap in the Iron Overlord armor. He thrust his left arm through the gap and pulled out several key connecting wires, which directly disabled the detection system of the Iron Overlord armor. Damn Tony! Even the sound that has been mechanically processed cannot conceal Obadiah's anger at the moment. Losing his vision, he could only grab back with his feeling, grabbed Tony Stark who was trying to dodge and threw him on the ground, and stepped on him with his thick mechanical legs again, completely cutting off Tony Stark's back path. What's more terrible is that the light of Mark III is gradually dimming, and the remaining energy is no longer enough to maintain the normal operation of Mark III. The steel armor that was originally used to protect him has now become a steel prison instead. It's over. Looking at the oppressive Iron King armor, Tori Stark feels despair. At the same time, he also thought of Lu Chuang who was holding a sniper rifle. At this time, the other party should still be hiding somewhere on the roof. Tony Stark remembered that Lu Chuang had a modified sniper bullet, which could explode with powerful explosive power. If the opponent cooperated with him at the beginning, he would have a chance to control the Iron Overlord armor. But now, Tony Stark gritted his teeth. The shell of the Iron Overlord armor is too thick. Even with that kind of explosive power, it is difficult to damage the Iron Overlord armor. There is no possibility of victory at all. But the problem is that Obadiah will take the initiative to show his head, and he is not a fool. Shish. At this moment, the Iron Overlord armor in front of him slowly opened, revealing Obadiah who was sitting in the cockpit. Since the detection system of the Iron Overlord armor failed, he could only observe with his own eyes. However, he would love to do it. Seeing Tony Stark struggling under his feet, Obadiah smiled cruelly, and controlled the mechanical arm to remove Tony Stark's steel helmet directly. Tony, I want to witness your death with my own eyes, I want you to watch me how to kill myself with the weapon you made. After taking off the steel helmet, Obadiah expected to see Tony Stark's remorse or fear. However, Obadiah noticed that Tony Stark was looking at him strangely. 
Tony, is this your last struggle? Tony Stark had a stiff expression. No, I just feel a little cold in my head, can you help me put the helmet back on? Boom, with a gunshot, Obadiah's cruel expression suddenly froze. Blood flowed slowly from the hole in his forehead. Slow footsteps came, and Tony Stark saw Lu Chuang again. At the moment Lu Chuang held the camera in his left hand and the pistol in his right hand, and shook his head helplessly. Who has a mech without a helmet? Tony Stark, who was not wearing a helmet, expressed silence. His helmet was forcibly removed. Without the driver's control, the Iron King's armor lost its balance and fell down. The pressure on Tony Stark's chest dropped sharply, but the energy of the small arc reactor was no longer enough, it was not enough to drive the Mark III at all, and he couldn't stand up at all under the weight of hundreds of kilograms of metal. After several unsuccessful attempts, Tony Stark had no choice but to turn to Lu Chuang, who was the only one present. Hey man, how about a hand? Wait, don't worry. Lu Chuang took the video camera, kept close-ups on Tony Stark's face, and muttered, this is a precious video of Tony Stark, it will almost become a precious video of his life, if I don't have money to spend in the future, selling this video will definitely make a lot of money. Tony Stark took a deep breath, resisting the urge to curse, if you delete the video now, I can transfer you a sum of money on the spot, definitely higher than anyone's bid. Lu Chuang shook his head, I refuse, it's too bad to sell it now, it will be worth more, money in the future. Instead of selling it now, he might as well wait until Tony Stark gave birth to a daughter, and then bring this video to Tony Stark. In order not to lose face in front of his daughter, maybe Tony Stark will give him the entire Stark industry. Although Tony Stark didn't know what Lu Chuang was thinking, he could feel full of malice. Don't worry, I won't release this video casually. At most, it's just my personal collection. Come on, smile at the camera, or I'll draw a bastard on your face. Lu Chuang took the camera and took a photo with Tony Stark in the same frame, and then put away the camera contentedly, completely ignoring Tony Stark's expression of wanting to kill someone. Okay, it's time to get down to business. Lu Chuang clapped his hands. In front of Tony Stark, Lu Chuang directly grabbed the small arc reactor on the chest of Iron King's armor. Different from the one on Tony Stark's chest, this small arc reactor was extremely full of energy, shining brightly in Lu Chuang's hand. Seeing this scene, Wani Stark's face gradually became gloomy, so your goal is the small arc reactor. Lu Chuang said innocently, Don't say that, make me look like a villain, this is my personal spoils, I can't take it too much, right? Tony Stark sneered, This is something I made with my own hands. It doesn't belong to Opadri at all. Opadri just snatched it away. If anything, it should be returned to its owner. Okay, you stretch out your hand, and I'll give it back to you. Tony Stark snorted coldly, and tried to raise his right hand, but the mechanical arm didn't move at all. Tony Stark had no expression on his face. He vowed to develop a lighter steel armor when he returned. The lighter the better. For example, nanomaterials are very good. Seeing that Tony Stark was silent, Lu Chuang put the small arc reactor into his back pocket, and looked at the Iron King's armor with some distress. After all, the ready-made steel armor was in front of him, and it would be much easier to imitate it. It's not that Lu Chuang has never thought about driving the Iron King armor back, but the problem is that this thing is too big, it looks like a tank when driving, it's basically impossible not to be discovered. If only this steel armor was smaller. Lu Chuang turned his head and looked at Tony Stark. To be precise, it was the Mark III given to him. Tony, do you think this armor is too heavy, why don't I take it off for you? Tony Stark shuddered, and instantly sensed Lu Chuang's malicious intentions. No, I think this is pretty good. Seeing the firm look in Tony Stark's eyes, Lu Chuang had no choice but to give up the idea in his mind, even if Tony Stark was willing to give him the Mark III, Lu Chuang would not dare to take it. You know, all of Tony Stark's steel armors are assisted by artificial intelligence JARVIS as a system, and each pair of steel armors is supervised by JARVIS. In front of Tony Stark. However, Lu Chuang also has a backup option, which is the Mark I in the Research Institute. The steel armor was made by Tony Stark in the cave and will not be supervised by JARVIS. Quote dot 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 quote. At this moment, Lu Chuang heard the noise of propellers. Looking around, 
two helicopters with shield symbols printed on them flew from a distance. It is estimated that after Phil Coulson and others lost contact, Shield sent additional personnel. I'll slip away first, come out to have tea together when I have time. Lu Chuang jumped directly from the roof to the research institute below without hesitation, and soon disappeared from Tony Stark's sight. After seeing Lu Chuang leave, Tony Stark's tense nerves finally relaxed. Who the hell is this guy? Tony Stark thought to himself. It's a pity that his steel helmet was taken off, and he couldn't collect the opponent's information with the help of Favis. Inside the institute, through the broken iron gate, a dozen fully armed shield agents broke in. The leader is a bald detective, he is the highest level agent here, responsible for commanding this operation. Seeing the dead body of his colleague in the corridor, the bald agent did not change his face, but made a gesture to let the agents go deeper into the institute, while he looked at the iron chain not far away, hung it disappeared in the above ten strings of events. Not long after, a shield agent came over, Sir, we found agent Phil Coulson. The bald detective nodded, followed the shield agent to the corner of the research institute, and then he saw the computer that was broken into several pieces. It was obviously damaged maliciously by someone, and the host computer was destroyed beyond its original state. At the same time, he also saw Phil Coulson lying upright on the ground with his hands on his forehead. Under the illumination of the lights, it seems very peaceful. Seeing this somewhat special posture, the bald detective couldn't help but pause. What's up with him? Preliminary judgment shows that Detective Phil Coulson should have been attacked by the enemy, and after a fierce resistance, he was anesthetized and fell into a coma. The bald detective looked at Phil Coulson's posture again, and he felt that Phil Coulson didn't resist too much. Putting aside his distracting thoughts, the bald detective took out a special potion and placed it under Phil Coulson's nose skillfully. Stimulated by the strong chemical smell, Phil Coulson gradually came to his senses. Seeing the appearance of the bald agent and shield agents, he quickly reacted and said to the bald agent, Sit well, I have important things need to go back and report to the director. The Tricurved Wing Building, the headquarters of the Strategic Homeland Defense Offensive and Logistics Agency. Sir, this is the entire report on this operation. After inspection, it is basically confirmed that Obedestine was behind the kidnapping of Tony Stark. A group of terrorists named Ten Rings were responsible for this attack, but they something went wrong in the negotiations, and Obedestine had already silenced the group of terrorists before that. In the director's office located in the middle of the headquarters, Phil Coulson was reporting the information he had received to a one-eyed, bald black man in front of him. This person is his boss, Nick Director Nick Fury, the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury flipped through the report in his hand, with a calm expression on his face. Obedestine is dead. Yes, the fatal wound was a gunshot wound on the forehead. The bullet was not numbered, and the source could not be found. According to Tony Stark's brief account, Obedestine was killed by an assailant wearing a mask and died in that Iron Overlord Steel, 737, in the cab of the Iron Armor. Hearing Phil Coulson's words, Nick Fury's one eye gave a strange look. Through the information in this report, he can fully see how powerful the combat ability of that pair of steel armor is, and its defense power is even more incapable of blasting missiles and such a defense power. The driver was killed by a headshot. Nick Fury is a little speechless, but he still maintains the image of the iron-blooded and cold-faced director on the surface. Who was the attacker? Tony Stark is unwilling to disclose, and he took the initiative to hide a lot of details. The reason is unknown for the time being, but afterwards we found that the steel armor was no longer functional, and it seemed that an important energy source was missing. According to my judgment, this energy source is very important. It may be taken away by the attacker, and the attacker who stole the blueprint from the research institute is very likely to be the same person. Design Drawing Energy Source Nick Fury looked gloomy, at least according to Phil Coulson. To be honest, his black face is hard to keep from being gloomy, so that he looks like he is calculating others all the time. Even Phil Coulson, who has been with him for many years, sometimes can't help but think of the other party are you trying to figure out some conspiracy again. Phil Coulson continued to report. Another point is that the incident last night has been reported. At that time, many people witnessed the battle between two pairs of steel armor. Now the media are reporting this incident. 
Most media believe that this time the incident is related to Tony Stark, and the military city intends to ask Torzonsta to hold a press conference to issue a clarification statement. Nick Fury tapped his fingers on the table, and said in a calm tone, cooperate with the military to hold a press conference and create an alibi for Tony Stark. As for Oba Destine's death, it was covered up by an accident, and we cannot disclose any relevant information for the time being. Immediately afterwards, Nick Fury looked at the report, which stated that the attacker was a masked man with Tony Stark's head on it. Start to investigate the identity of the attacker, and investigate whether there are traces of other organizations behind it. Clear, in the afternoon, little Peter came to Lu Chuang's house as usual. He tiptoed and knocked on the door. After waiting for a while, Lu Chuang opened the door and said with a mysterious face, Little Peter, you are finally here, come in quickly, big brother will show you a big baby. 11. Seeing the strange expression on Lu Chuang's face, little Peter swallowed. He remembered that Aunt May once told him that if he saw an adult with such an expression, he should turn around and run to the police. Out of familiarity with Lu Chuang, little Peter still held back the fear and worry in his heart, trembling and walked out of the room. Lu Chuang didn't notice little Peter's condition, walked all the way to the door of the garage, opened the door and greeted little Peter, the things are inside, come and have a look. This is, the workshop of superhero. This time little Peter didn't think too much, but looked at Lu Chuang with glowing eyes, I, can I really go in? In Lu Chuang's house, little Peter has wanted to see the superhero's workshop more than once. In his imagination, the superhero's workshop is a secret base, just like the superhero in the comics, with all kinds of cool equipment and uniforms. It's a pity that Lu Chuang never mentioned it. Little Peter thought it was a superhero's secret base, and outsiders couldn't enter it, so he didn't take the initiative to ask to go in and have a look. But now Lu Chuang actually said that he could take a look, and little Peter was so excited that his little hands were shaking. Lu Chuang smiled slightly. Before that, you have to remember that you can't disclose everything that happened afterwards to anyone. If the superhero's secret base is exposed, we will be in a very dangerous situation, understand? This kind of dialogue once again touched the nerve of little Peter that belongs to the superhero. Little Peter clenched his fists and nodded vigorously, understood. Okay, come in with me. With excitement, little Peter followed Lu Chuang into the garage, and saw all kinds of firearms and weapons hanging on the walls, and little Peter even saw an exaggerated bazooka. Little Peter was dumbfounded. This superhero base seemed a little different from what he had imagined. How does it feel more like an armory? At this time, little Peter suddenly noticed that in the depths of the garage, a pair of steel armor was hung in the air by iron chains, exuding a metal texture all over his body. Although it looked very dilapidated, its metal mecha shape was I can touch the point of little Peter at once. Quote dot 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 quote. Little Peter breathed heavily and pointed at the steel armor tremblingly. Lu Chuang stretched out his hands, and introduced grandly, yes, this pair of steel armor is the super battle suit I have been mentioning. After being confirmed, little Peter quickly asked, is this your superhero equipment? Lu Chuang shook his head, no, I borrowed this from a superhero on purpose. He is very nice. He heard that you were going to make a super battle suit, so he hugged my leg and begged me to take this steel armor away. Quote. Little Peter was amazed, this superhero must be too good. Worthy of being a superhero. Little Peter didn't doubt it, and stared at the steel armor intently, I, can I touch it? Definitely, just touch it. Little Peter stretched out his hand to touch the steel armor, and the cold touch came from his fingertips, but he couldn't suppress little Peter's fiery heart at the moment. Just ask which boy can refuse the charm of mechs. But this was not over yet, Lu Chuang turned on the computer on the work desk, and a complete steel armor design drawing appeared on the screen, all the values were clearly marked, and various technical terms were enough to drive a layman crazy. However, little Peter stared wide-eyed and rushed to the computer impatiently. Although he could not understand it yet, it is not difficult to understand from the exploded view of the iron armor above. This turned out to be a design 1.7 diagram of a super battle suit. Seeing little Peter's reaction, Lu Chuang was very satisfied. As long as you are interested, you will have the motivation to move forward. I think you can see it too. This is the design drawing of the super battle suit, and I borrowed it from that enthusiastic superhero. 
It will be used as a reference for you to make super battle suits in the future. Little Peter, people have high expectations for you. It's very high, don't disappoint that superhero's expectations. The steel armor is in the front, and the blueprint is in the back. Now Little Peter is so excited that he is about to split his fork on the spot. He said firmly, I will definitely live up to his expectations, I want to make a super battle suit. Seemingly sensing Little Peter's decision, Lu Chuang was deeply touched and slapped his thigh fiercely. Okay, now that the atmosphere is here, I have to announce one more thing. Today's exercises are double. Little Peter, regarding what happened in the Stoke Group industrial area last night, the official statement has been sent to everyone. Some witnesses claimed that a machine out of control happened in the Stoke Group industrial area last night. Fortunately, Tony Stark a bodyguard. At the moment, the press conference jointly held by Stark Industry and the military is playing on the TV screen, and the spokesperson of the military is Colonel Rhodes, Tony Stark's military friend, who is also the future Tukau machine. After Rhodes talked nonsense, Tony Stark's figure appeared on the TV screen. He came to the speaking platform and casually read from the manuscript in his hand, but he was forcibly interrupted by a female reporter before he could say a few words. I'm sorry, Mr. Stark, do you think we'll believe that? Under the questioning of the female reporter, Tony Stark simply threw away the manuscript. The actual situation is, I am Iron Man. After the words fell, the press conference exploded in an instant. Looking at Rhodes' face that was almost 13 black and charcoal, Lu Chuang knew without guessing that the other party must be scolding his mother right now. No way, who told him to have a flirtatious friend like Tony Stark? Little Peter shifted his eyes from the computer to the TV, and said excitedly, Tony Stark is actually Iron Man, because. When the two steel armors were fighting on the highway last night, some people who were not afraid of death took videos and posted them on the internet. These videos have long been aroused by major news. Little Peter also watched some videos at school this morning, and even cheered for Mark III in the video. After all, the shape of Mark III is really loved by Little Peter, making Little Peter a loyal fan of Steel Armor younger brother. But the Iron Overlord armor is different. It is old-fashioned and has no special features. It is not as handsome as Mark III. The only feature is the big guy. It looks like a villain in the comics. Little Peter swore at that time that the super battle suit he made in the future must not be as ugly as the Iron King armor, otherwise it would be embarrassing to wear it out. Ha, huh, big guy, Little Peter seemed to remember something, and turned to look at the Iron King armor on the computer screen. Old-fashioned, featureless, bulky. Isn't this the ugly steel armor in the video? Little Peter looked at Lu Chuang with a sad face. You are lying, this is not given to me by superhero at all. Hearing this, Lu Chuang was stunned for a moment, and then realized, I'm not lying to you, this is indeed a superhero's battle suit, and you also know this superhero, it's Tony Stark on TV, you've seen it all, just now he announced his it's Iron Man. Tony Stark gave it to me. Little Peter couldn't believe it. Definitely, if you don't believe me, I still have a video of Tony Stark here. Lu Chuang took out the video camera pulled the progress bar of the finished video to the back and handed it to Little Peter to see. As a result, Little Peter saw the scene of Iron King armor grabbing Mark III and smashing it. Little Peter, seeing Little Peter's expression was not right, Lu Chuang looked at the camera, oh, I made a mistake, it's time to pull the stars. As he spoke, he pulled back the progress bar a bit. In the picture, the Iron Overlord armor firmly stomps on Mark III, just like a scene of hanging and beating. Dot 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 quote, under the inadvertent influence of Lu Chuang, Little Peter has long regarded Tony Stark as the target of pursuit. And today, Wani Stark announced that he is Iron Man. However, it is obviously two happy things, why do they add up and become like this? Seeing Tony Stark and Iron Man being pressed to the ground by Iron Man's armor at the same time, unconsciously, the image of the two idols in Little Peter's heart was a little bit broken. Lu Chuang felt that Peter's enthusiasm should not be discouraged too much. After all, it is a good thing for him to have a goal, so he comforted him, don't look at Tony Stark being hammered, in fact, the huge amounts of steel armor is an imitation of his initial made of iron armor, this is it. Lu Chuang pointed to the Mark I that was hung by an iron chain, so, in a sense, this steel armor blueprint also belongs to Tony Stark. 
Hearing his words, Little Peter finally felt better. Then, Lu Chuang looked serious. Little Peter, do you know why Tony Stark gave you this design drawing? Little Peter thought for a while. In order to encourage me, I have to work hard. Wrong. Remind me to be careful of such villains. Quote exclamation mark quote. Don't plagiarize. It's still wrong. Your thinking is still too superficial. Lu Chuang shook his head and explained earnestly. The purpose of his doing this is definitely to make you make a super battle suit that can drop him and then hit him on the ground. How is it possible? No one would like to be pushed to the ground and beaten. Little Peter looked disbelieving. Although I am still young, you can't fool me. Don't believe it. I have evidence here. Lu Chuang dragged the video to the end and handed it to Little Peter. Look, after being hammered, you can see how happy he is smiling. Tony Stark's bitter face appeared on the screen in an instant. The smile could barely be seen by Little Peter, and what attracted more attention was the tattered Mark III on Tony Stark's body, matched with Tony Stark's smile, the whole picture it looks abnormally bleak. He smiled so forcedly. It's not forced, but happy, too happy to laugh. Lu Chuang corrected Little Peter's words. Wait until you make a super battle suit and hit Tony Stark on the ground. He will definitely be very happy in his heart, because this is the best tribute to idols from fans. Little Peter imagined the super battle suit he made and hit Tony Stark on the ground. I have to say, it's really heart-wrenching. I see, I'm going to make a super battle suit and hit Tony Stark on the ground. That's right, it's just this momentum, if Tony Stark knows, he'll be too happy to laugh. Lu Chuang patted his thigh excitedly, since the atmosphere is here three. I went into the room to study. Before Lu Chuang finished speaking, little Peter ran out of the garage. Lu Chuang raised his brows, how could he feel that this kid is getting better and better? Here, the televised press conference is over. Open black lens bracket title touch. Holy light is fooling you, can be completed. Unlock condition. Convince 15 villains to change their minds, 0 fifteenths. Awarded title. Super high school level priest. New achievement missions. Seeing the appearance of the achievement task, Lu Chuang breathed a sigh of relief. To be honest, he is really worried that if the current achievement task is not completed, there will be no new achievement task. Fortunately, it seems that there is no limit to the number of achievement tasks that can be triggered. Convincing 15 villains to change their minds. Lu Chuang was speechless when he saw the content of this achievement task. Does this game have hatred against the villains, why do you always have trouble with the villains? Fortunately, this time Lu Chuang didn't see the word heavy sin, otherwise the villain's training tool he threw into the basement would come out of the rivers and lakes again, and there would inevitably be another bloody storm at that time. However, the difficulty of this achievement task is not small. It seems that priests are better at persuading villains to change their minds. Definitely, ninjas cannot be ruled out. Mouth escape, I haven't learned this craft before. Lu Chuang thought about it for a while, and decided to go to a nearby church to find a priest to learn from. Among other things, he could at least try to imitate the other person's temperament, which would make it easier for him to fool other people, and maybe make the villain take the initiative to change his mind. Just do it. Lu Chuang took out his mobile phone and searched, and found a church in the south of Brooklyn. Little Peter, watch the door for me, I'll go out for a while. It's here, right. Lu Chuang looked at the church in front of him, and walked in without saying a word. The church was quiet, and only a few people could be seen vaguely. Lu Chuang scanned around with the game system. Open black lens bracket target meets the conditions close black lens bracket. Lu Chuang raised his eyebrows. He didn't expect that in a place full of light like a church, the probability of spawning villains is so high. There are five qualified villains in random investigations. No wonder they want to come to the church to pray. It turns out that they have ghosts in their hearts to purify. At this time, Lu Chuang saw one of the villains walking into the confessional deep in the church. Apparently, the priest of the church was inside the confessional. Lu Chuang found a seat and sat down, waiting patiently for the villain to come out. After more than 10 minutes, the villain came out of the confession room, and Lu Chuang subconsciously checked it with the game system. Open black lens bracket target does not meet the conditions close black lens bracket. FK, Lu Chuang was dumbfounded, decided to change his mind so soon. 
This is faster than he usually thinks about what to eat tomorrow. Thinking of this, Lu Chuang hurried into the confession room. The light in the confession room was very dim. Through the gauze in the middle, he could see a priest in black robe standing next door. Seeing the arrival of Lu Chuang, the priest said gently, Please start people. Ah, start what? Quote dot dot dot. I mean, please start your confidant. Oh, I almost forgot. Lu Chuang finally realized that he was in the confessional. According to the normal process, he should start to confess his faults and crimes. Father, I don't know if I should say something or not. Lu Chuang quickly entered the state, pretending to be a sinner who came to confess. After all, he came to learn mouth escape, and he had to give the other party a chance to perform. It's okay, kid, this is where you talk. Will you help me keep a secret? Everyone's secrets are safe, and if you want to confide in them, I am more than willing to help you keep them. Well, I believe you. Lu Chuang thought for a while and said, it's like this, for example. I mean for example, for example, I have a friend who shot and killed someone. Will God forgive him? Hearing Lu Chuang's words, the priest realized instantly, which is not uncommon for him here. According to his experience, generally speaking, this friend must be himself. However, the job of a priest is like a psychological counselor and a lawyer, and he has the obligation to protect privacy. He will not go to the police because of these criminal evidences. The priest sighed softly. Son, God will forgive everyone. As long as your friend repents sincerely and promises never to do it again, I believe God will forgive him. Lu Chuang said with some embarrassment, I'm afraid it's a little difficult, because I... I mean my friend, he may have killed a little too much. How many? Not many, just a few dozen. The priest widened his eyes, this is actually a serial killer. The priest drew a sign of the cross on his chest, and managed to stabilize his emotions. Everyone has the opportunity to repent, and we cannot deprive anyone of the right to reform. If you repent sincerely, God will forgive you. Ah, I mean that friend of yours. Learned learned. Lu Chuang looked at the priest in the confession room, blinked, and suddenly asked, Father, I have one more question to ask, if I use an anesthetic needle to knock someone out, but I sincerely apologize, do you think that person will forgive me? The priest breathed a sigh of relief. He was really afraid of what horrible evidence would come out of Lu Chuang's mouth again. I think that person will forgive you if you are sincere enough. Yes, father, I'm sorry, father. Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. Before the priest could react, he saw the door of the confessional suddenly open. View. The anesthetic needle pierced the priest's thigh, and the priest fell down slowly. Sorry, let me use your identity. Lu Chuang placed the priest in the corner of the confessional, then took off his black robe and put it on for himself. After about a few minutes, Lu Chuang saw a figure walking in. Open black lens bracket target meets the conditions close black lens bracket. Immediately afterwards, a woman's voice came from the opposite side, Father, I am guilty. It seems that this villain is very conscious. Lu Chuang coughed lightly, trying to sound as gentle as possible. It's okay. Kid, this is where you can confide, and I'm willing to help you keep a secret. The woman said tremblingly, Father, I betrayed my husband. Was it so explosive right from the start? Lu Chuang felt that even if he didn't have this achievement task, he would be able to eat melon seeds here and listen to gossip in the future. With the idea of rehabilitating the wicked, Lu Chuang said softly, Child, God will forgive everyone. As long as you repent sincerely and promise never to do it again, I believe God will forgive you. But, the woman sobbed softly, and continued, But I have never been able to face my husband and children, because the person I cheated on was my husband's twin brother. Lu Chuang, I said what on earth are you drawing? Isn't this the same face? Well, everyone has the opportunity to repent. We cannot deprive anyone of the right to reform. I think if you are sincere enough, your family will forgive you, and your strong husband will forgive you too, your. Really, father, definitely, but, I accidentally became pregnant with my husband's younger brother's child. This is free and open America, I love it. Lu Chuang looked at the comatose priest, what to do, there seems to be no formula for this kind of problem. Cha of Li felt that Lu Chuang was not moving, and the woman asked, father, are you still there? Quote dot 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 dot. I am here, you said, 
what should I do now? Lu Chuang really has no experience with the plot of this kind of third-rate ethical drama. He had no choice but to bite the bullet and said, Don't worry, at least, at least the child has grown up, and his appearance will not arouse your husband's suspicion. After all, they are twins, so they will look more or less similar. However, hearing Lu Chuang's words, the woman seemed to have unloaded her burden. Thank you so much, father, I feel better instantly, and I won't betray my husband much in the future. Hee <laughs> hee, no thanks. Watching the woman leave, Lu Chuang glanced at the game system. Unlock condition. Convince 15 villains to change their minds, 1 15th. Lu Chuang curled his lips, you call this a change of heart, obviously he is here to find psychological comfort. I believe it won't be long before this kind of person can't help but do other things again. However, it has nothing to do with him anyway. Thank you, father, I know I'm a good girl even though I've had an abortion with a fight and a drug. May God forgive you, child. Lu Chuang replied skillfully, and then looked at the game system. Unlock condition. Convince 15 villains to change their minds, 14 fifteenths. Lu Chuang stayed in the confessional for several hours, and the progress bar was finally almost completed. He found that this achievement task did not seem to be as difficult as imagined. Those wicked people say they are here to feel ashamed, but in fact they are just giving themselves a psychological comfort, so that their inner guilt will be relieved, so that they can start a new life with peace of mind. It's a good one to lie to yourself. Definitely, there is no harm for Lu Chuang. At this time, another person walked into the confessional. Open black lens bracket target does not meet the conditions close black lens bracket. Seeing the system prompt, Lu Chuang lost interest in an instant and became an unqualified confessor again. There is no way, not all confessors are real villains, and the crimes some people confess are only trivial things, and they are not really villains at all. But Lu Chuang is in this position, it is not easy to drive away the opponent directly, so he can only continue to play the role of priest. Father, I am guilty. No need for Lu Chuang to speak, the other party came up with a classic opening remark. However, this voice seemed familiar to Lu Chuang. Immediately afterwards, the other party said slowly, I used to always listen to people's cries for help. I wanted to help those in need. I originally believed that there would be justice in the courts in broad daylight, but in the end I was deceiving myself, darkness will only respond to darkness, I have to use more violent means to stop violence. Lu Chuang felt that the more he heard it, the more familiar it became. When he looked closer to the gauze net, he saw that the other party was a man in a suit wearing sunglasses. Yo, isn't this lawyer Ma? Lu Chuang remembered that Matt was a Catholic, so it was not surprising that Matt came to church. So, I'm guilty. Just as Lu Chuang was thinking, Matt had finished his confession and asked, Father, do you think violence can really solve the problem? As a priest for several hours, Lu Chuang took his time and answered in a low voice, Definitely can't, kid. Matt sighed, he knew what he did might be wrong, but what could he do? Now that the situation in Hell's Kitchen is getting worse and worse, it is impossible for him to capture all criminals in prison at one time and prevent more crimes from happening through violence. However, Lu Chuang didn't stop, and continued, Violence can't solve any problems, but it can solve the people who create the problems. Matt, although he thinks there is some truth in this sentence, but is it really okay for you as a priest to say such a thing? Interrupted by Lu Chuang, Matt's originally depressed mood became incoherent. Father, are you saying that violence is all wrong? Matt is worthy of being a lawyer, and Lu Chuang can directly score full marks for this reading comprehension alone. Lu Chuang said in a deep voice, Yes, since the problems have been solved smoothly, why should we care about the way to solve them? Matt thought about it, then took a deep breath. I see, force is only about solving worse problems, and that makes sense, if violence isn't. Violence is meaningless if it's not about killing. Matt, Lu Chuang, made it easy to say, but he really couldn't control it. You are not a priest, who are you? Matt questioned, this time he finally discovered Lu Chuang's abnormality. Lu Chuang tried to explain, child, what are you talking about, I am a priest. Matt didn't believe it at all, and immediately concentrated on spreading the perception to the opposite side, trying to capture the other party's information. At the same time, he heard a strong heartbeat. Boom boom boom. Dot 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 dot. 
This time it's a minuet, and it's you again. Quote. Matt covered his heart BDFA pale, he didn't expect to hear Beethoven here. Liu Chuang said cheerfully. What a coincidence, lawyer Ma, was the stinky tofu delicious last time. It's okay not to say this, but Matt feels nauseous when he mentions this. Last time Liu Chuang's stinky smoke bombs tortured Matt a lot. All kinds of stinky smells lingered on the tip of his nose for a long time, and he had to vomit for several days before he calmed down. As a result, Fudge suddenly came back with a box of stinky tofu now, his sense of smell was hit hard again. During that time, his sense of smell seemed to be out of order, leaving only the residual smell of stinky tofu. Matt forcibly suppressed the surging stomach acid, gritted his teeth and said, What are you doing here? Liu Chuang said helplessly. Aren't you talking nonsense, I'm a priest, isn't it normal in church? You are not a priest at all, the person lying next to your ear is the real priest. If there were such a bad priest, the church would be ruined sooner or later. With his powerful perception ability, Matt was able to perceive that there was another person in the space beside Lu Chuang. Judging by the beating of his heart, the other person should be temporarily unconscious. It was also for this reason that Matt was able to resist not directly attacking Lu Chuang. He fell asleep, so I came to take his place. Lu Chuang opened his eyes and said nonsense. Lawyer Ma, if there is nothing else, please don't block those believers who need the priest to listen to you. His tone was very calm, and it sounded as if he was really thinking about the followers. Lu Chuang has the ability to control the heartbeat, and Matt couldn't judge how much of what he said was true or false, but considering that this is a church, he clenched his fists and finally walked out of the confession room. Before leaving, Matt warned, I'll be watching you from outside. The staring that Matt mentioned here naturally refers to his perception ability. The whole church is within the range of his perception, and every move of Lu Chuang will be locked by him. Matt's words are to warn Lu Chuang not to act recklessly. Lu Chuang spread his hands to show his innocence. He is a decent priest, how could he mess around? Soon after Matt left, a woman came in. Father, my cat is dead, can you pray for it? Sorry, animals are not within the scope of our prayer business, and our prayers are only open to believers. Lu Chuang resolutely refused, asking him to sing the Great Compassion Mantra for salvation, and pray that he would not know how to do this. After the prayers, I want to sing the $50,000 giving chapter. Ma'am, don't talk about it. It doesn't matter if it's money or not. I just want to pray for your cat. Well, our church only accepts cash. Just hand over the cash to me. Matt who is eavesdropping in the church. If this kind of person is a priest, God will kill this guy with a thunderbolt first. Chapter 71. Holy Light is Fooling You, Completed. Unlock Condition. Convince 15 villains to change their minds 15 fifteenths. Awarded title. Super high school level priest. Do you want to unlock the title? When Lu Chuang sent away the last villain, the prompt of the game system popped up. Finished. Lu Chuang didn't have hesitation, so he chose, unlock directly in the confessional. Open black lens bracket unlock successfully, close black lens bracket. Title. Super high school level, priest. Open black lens bracket description. May the holy light guide your path close black lens bracket. Characteristic. Mana. Suddenly, Lu Chuang felt an obscure and mysterious energy springing up in his body, and then spread all over his body, his perception became clearer, as if there was a thin veil in the world, but now it was finally lifted in front of Lu Chuang, he could faintly feel some changes around him. Lu Chuang looked down and saw a looming shadow emerging from the priest. Could this be the so-called soul? Lu Chuang touched his chin, and suddenly had a guess in his heart. After Lu Chuang observed carefully, he found that there were some obvious black spots on the soul of the priest, as if his white clothes were stained with mud. Lu Chuang stretched out his hand to touch the priest, the energy in his body rushed towards the priest as if he was being drawn, ignoring the obstacles of his body, he sank directly into the priest's soul, under the infusion of this energy, those black spots that hindered the eyes gradually became transparent until they disappeared completely not see. Well, the priest's complexion became rosy, and it seemed that he was about to wake up. Lu Chuang was a little surprised. The dose of this anesthesia injection can make an adult unconscious for four hours. It has only been more than two hours, and he woke up so quickly. 
No need to think about it, it must have something to do with the energy in his body. Judging by the state of the priest, this energy should have the ability to clear away negative states, and it looks like it has been purified by the holy light. Seeing this scene, Lu Chuang thought in his heart, sure enough, it is the mana that often appears in film and television works. Wait, now that I have the mana, can I be considered a magician now, for example, I can make a fireball or something. Thinking of this, Lu Chuang couldn't help raising his hand to condense the fireball. By the way, what's the fireball spell? Lu Chuang was stunned, he hadn't learned any spells, and the spells he knew were probably only those in Harry Potter. After all, it was easier to remember only four words. Lu Chuang looked at the priest who was gradually waking up, and secretly gave him a tentative command. Stupid. After waiting for a few seconds, the priest showed no sign of coma, but slowly opened his eyes. This time Lu Chuang controlled the magic power to flow to his fingertips, pointing at the priest again and chanting. Stupid. V-R-E. The priest woke up, and he pointed at Lu Chuang with a terrified face, as if recalling what happened before he fell into a coma. Lu Chuang's eyes froze, he took out an anesthesia gun and shot at the priest, looking unconscious. Priest. Ah. The priest fell down again, and there was an imperceptible black spot in his soul, but it was far less than the black spot just now. Obviously, the anesthesia injection was not the real cause of the dark spots. According to Lu Chuang's guess, those dark spots should be other toxins left in the other party's body. In that case, the priest seems to have to thank him. May God bless you, boy. After speaking, Lu Chuang walked out of the confession room, only to see Matt standing outside with a blank face. You devil, what happened in the confessional did not escape Matt's perception. He clearly heard how Lu Chuang tricked and abducted those, poor, believers, as well as the priest who had been murdered many times. Lawyer Ma, you are a law student, so you have to be responsible for what you say. Lu Chuang said seriously, how can I be a devil? Anyone with a discerning eye can see it. I am a priest. You can't doubt my profession just because I am young. Doubt you not at all because of your age. Just when Matt was about to refute, a black believer who came to the confession room happened to see them. You! Exclamation mark. Matt secretly thought something was wrong, the other party must have spotted Lu Chuang's disguise at a glance. But what he was worried about was not Lu Chuang's identity being exposed, but Lu Chuang's reaction after being exposed. Matt couldn't guarantee whether this dangerous guy would become angry and act violently. Matt tensed up instantly, as long as Lu Chuang made any abnormal movements, he would immediately stop Lu Chuang. The black believer looked at Matt, and then at Lu Chuang who was wearing a black robe, his expression suddenly enlightened. I'm sorry, father, I interrupted your communication with this believer. Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. Matt was stunned for a moment, it was completely different from what he thought. May I ask this believer, with which eye do you see that this guy is a priest? Apart from other things, can't you be a little suspicious when you see an Asian priest? However, what Matt did not know was that Lu Chuang, who has a super high school priest at at the moment, is a perfect image of a priest in the eyes of black believers. His movements and smiles are full of piety and faith, and the sun shines through the glass windows of the church. On Lu Chuang's body, the whole body seemed to be surrounded by divine light. Just this special effect, who else is the priest but Lu Chuang? As for Lu Chuang's skin color, who cares, God can be a girl, can't the priest be a yellow skin? The black believer prayed devoutly, hoping to get forgiveness from Lu Chuang. Lu Chuang drew a perfect cross on his chest, and smiled gently, it's okay, kid, you didn't disturb anyone. Even Matt felt at this time. Lu Chuang's voice seemed to have a special magical power. Hearing his words, the whole person involuntarily became calm, and what was even more frightening was that Matt actually had a thought in his heart that he wanted to confide in Lu Chuang. What exactly is going on? Matt's breathing was a little short, and now Lu Chuang gave him a really weird feeling, if the other party hadn't given him such a bad impression, I'm afraid he would also believe that Lu Chuang is a priest like a black believer. My merciful priest, thank you for your forgiveness. Looking at Lu Chuang bathed in the sun, the black believer felt as if his heart had been baptized. He couldn't help but want to confide his thoughts, and couldn't wait to say, Father, I have sinned, I have too many sins to blame. You confided. Sorry, 
kid, we're closed here, come back tomorrow. Ignoring the blank eyes of the black believers, Lu Chuang walked out of the church in a priest's black robe. Matt took a deep breath, and the shaky thoughts in his heart were instantly shattered. He faced the statue of God in the church with a sad and indignant expression. God, come and save your poor believers, the devil has come to the world, and even sneaked into the church as an undercover agent, with a very high position. If you don't show up again, your believers will collectively rebel and run to the demon's camp. After walking out of the church, Lu Chuang turned around and found that Matt hadn't chased him out. Thinking of Matt's expression of wanting to talk but forcibly holding back, Lu Chuang chuckled, presumably now Matt has been so shocked by his super high school priest that he dare not act rashly. However, lawyer Ma's soul is quite strong. Lu Chuang can see the souls of everyone, including Matt's soul. He can see that Matt's soul is stronger than everyone in the church, and even the priest's soul is no doubt like ordinary people. From this point of view, the soul has nothing to do with belief, and it is probably related to special energy such as spiritual power. Thinking of this, Lu Chuang suddenly wondered what his own soul was like, it couldn't be weaker than Matt's soul. So, he took a look at the glass as he passed by a restaurant. To Lu Chuang's disappointment, he did not, 070, see the appearance of the soul in himself. Can't you see your own soul? Unwilling to give up, Lu Chuang leaned close to the glass and stared at him for a long time, and even posed several poses. In the end, he was very disappointed to find that he couldn't see anything, which completely dispelled his inner curiosity. Lu Chuang sighed, and when he turned to leave, a young girl suddenly ran out of the restaurant. Enough, I have endured you inside for a long time. Jingle. The door of the restaurant was pushed open, and a tall and thin figure wearing a hood walked into the restaurant, with dark green hair hanging from both sides of his neck to his chest, with thick metal bracelets on his wrists, and steel-toed boots on his feet. The rock and roll outfit instantly attracted the attention of many people. Ignoring the gazes around him, those dark green eyes, which were the same color as the hair, looked at the restaurant, and soon found his target, and walked towards the corner of the restaurant. As if aware of her arrival, a burly young man with long hair sitting in the corner of the restaurant suddenly turned his head and smiled at her in a friendly manner. After she sat down, the long-haired young man took the lead in introducing, I'm glad you came here. It's our first meeting. I'm John, and this is my companion Sophia. The red-haired woman sitting next to the long-haired young man also nodded towards her. Lorna Dane. Lorna replied coldly. She took off her hood, revealing a cold and delicate face. Regarding Lorna's indifferent attitude, John was not angry, and said in a low voice, Dan, we are sent by Ivan, and I invite you here this time to discuss an important matter with you. We would like to invite you to join the Mutant Underground. Quote, yes, they are all mutant, from the Mutant Underground organization. The purpose of their coming this time is to invite the girl in front of them to join their organization. As that Ivan woman, hearing this name, Lorna's attitude improved slightly, but her face still had that expression of indifference, and she said calmly, Sorry, I'm not interested in the organization you mentioned, and I don't want to join you plan, you should find someone else. Seeing Lorna's resolute refusal, Sophia tried to persuade, I think you should understand that the ultimate purpose of our organization is to save those oppressed compatriots. Provide them with a safe place to avoid unfair treatment. Joining us with your ability will definitely help more compatriots. Lorna didn't speak. As a mutant, she naturally understood what Sophia meant. It's like racism between whites and blacks. There is also racial discrimination between humans and mutants, and it is more serious and extreme, so that mutants suffer from various persecutions in today's society. Mutants like them who are not obvious on the surface are fine, as long as their abilities are not exposed, they will be treated as ordinary humans. If it is those mutants whose appearance is completely different from ordinary people, their experience can be described as miserable. They are so small that they cannot find a job, and they are so big that they may be stopped by the police on the spot when they walk on the street. To face a clip of bullets. Even America has a bill specifically targeting mutants. As long as mutants use their ability in public, whether it is an accident or self-defense, the law will judge them as a felony and they can be arrested on the spot. It is precisely because of the emergence of this bill that many innocent mutants were directly arrested and put in prison, and the reasons for arresting them are also strange. 
The most bizarre thing is that there is a mutant whose appearance is too ugly, so it scares passers-by and was put in prison. These days, it is illegal to be ugly. Who is it that provokes whom? Since that time, some mutants who are not confident about their appearance dare not go out casually. Even the photos uploaded on their social accounts have to be carefully PS, so as not to be charged with unwarranted charges. And John and Sophia's mutant underground organization was created to save these innocent mutants. Simply put, it is against the law, and every member of the organization can be called an extrajudicial fanatic. To be honest, Lorna is also very angry about mutant status in society today, but she really didn't think about joining any rescue organization and running around as an outlaw. Sophia continued to persuade and Lorna failed to answer 10 words. As a veteran, John couldn't see what Lorna was thinking, he sighed, and stopped Sophia who wanted to continue talking. Dan, if you change your mind at any time, you can contact us at any time, but I want to remind you that the situation in Mutant is no longer optimistic, and we must prepare for battle in advance. John left a card with a number on the table, and pulled Fia out of the restaurant. Looking at the backs of the two leaving through the glass window, Lorna was a little dazed and didn't know what she was thinking. At this moment, Lorna suddenly noticed a figure in a priest's black robe stopped outside the window, just blocking her sight. I thought the other party was just a passerby, but Lorna didn't care at first. However, more than ten seconds passed, and Lorna found that the man had no intention of leaving, so he just stood there blocking her full view. Suddenly, a head came closer, almost touching Lorna, so frightened that Lorna couldn't help shaking, and quickly controlled her body to keep shrinking back. Lorna clenched her fists and turned her eyes away as if she didn't see the other party. But driven by curiosity, Lorna couldn't help but glanced out of the window out of the corner of her eye, only to find that this guy still didn't leave, and even put on various strange poses. When Lorna saw this guy making funny faces at her, she finally couldn't help but burst out, completely ignoring the cold image just now and rushed out of the restaurant. Enough, I have endured you inside for a long time. Um, Lu Chuang turned his head to look and found that there was no one else around him, so he was sure that the girl with dark green hair in front of him was coming for him. Lorna looked at Lu Chuang with a cold face, what were you doing just now? Lu Chuang blinked, look in the mirror, otherwise. Hearing his words, Lorna glanced at the polished glass of the restaurant, and found that the outside could not see the inside, so she knew that she had misunderstood. Most of Lorna's anger disappeared in an instant, and she restored her original calm face, and said, Aren't you a priest, why do you have to put on that strange posture when looking in the mirror? It's not good to be seen by those believers. Feeling the temperament of Lu Chuang, Lorna reluctantly believes that Lu Chuang is a priest. Although this priest looks a bit strange, Lu Chuang corrected, I think you seem to have some misunderstanding about priests. Priests are also human beings, so can't they have their own little special hobbies? Lorna looked at him suspiciously, are you really a priest? I doubt me, Lu Chuang's eyes widened, in his short career as a priest, he was questioned twice in a row. This is undoubtedly an insult to his profession. No, I have not. You are doubting me. Well, since this is the case, then I have to prove myself to you. Lorna's expression froze, could the priest still buy and sell by force? Lu Chuang stared at Lorna for a long time. Lorna expressed familiarity with this look. He had seen it in the restaurant just now. It turned out that this guy looked at himself and others with the same look. After staring for a long time, Lu Chuang frowned suddenly, and said with a serious face, Girl, I smell an evil dark breath on you, I suspect that you have encountered a demon. Demon, Lorna raised her eyebrows slightly, Father, are you serious? I don't remember encountering any strange things, so what kind of demon are you talking about? Lu Chuang shook his head, I don't know, although I am a priest, but to tell you the truth, in fact, I just took office not long ago, so the theoretical knowledge is still a little lacking, but I can smell it, this evil dark breath it's very smelly, and it's not ordinary smelly, it's very smelly. Lorna was expressionless, she seriously doubted that Lu Chuang was saying that she was smelly, and she had evidence. Obviously, no girl can bear such an insult. Lorna's face became more and more gloomy, and she gritted her teeth and said, even if you are a priest, it doesn't mean you can talk nonsense. Listen to me clearly. I take a bath every day. It is impossible for me to stink, let alone smell like you said. 
It's such an exaggeration. As soon as she finished speaking, Lorna was startled suddenly. Something's wrong. What's wrong with me? This doesn't seem like her character at all. In the past, she was too lazy to talk nonsense with others, let alone reveal such issues involving her privacy to a complete stranger. In fact, under the influence of Lu Chuang's super high school priest, Lorna unknowingly let go of her defenses. Originally withdrawn, she actually stood outside the restaurant and chatted with Lu Chuang, until finally Lorna only then noticed a trace of abnormality. Lu Chuang spread his hands helplessly, believe me, I really smell it. If you don't believe me, let me describe it to you. It's like blue cheese mixed with canned herring that has been boiled for several days and then put in a cool place. Don't tell me about the stench that comes out, I suddenly feel a little hungry. The corner of Lorna's mouth twitched a few times, resisting the thought of rebuttal, turned around and left directly. She didn't know what was going on with this strange feeling. But her intuition told her that she must leave here quickly, otherwise she would become more and more strange. To be honest, no one believes it. What happened to this society? Seeing the back of Lorna walking faster and faster, Lu Chuang couldn't help shaking his head. He really wasn't lying. Although there is nothing special about Lorna's soul, Lu Chuang saw a faint black aura around Lorna. This black aura is very weak, and it doesn't seem to affect the ability of the soul. It looks more like Lorna stuck it accidentally. With the blessing of Mana, Lu Chuang has a special perception ability. Just like Matt, he can see everything through powerful perception without using his eyes. And Lu Chuang smelled the filthy aura exuding from this mass of black aura through mana. For some reason, when Lu Chuang smelled this breath, the mana in his body suddenly became active, frantically sending a signal of desire to Lu Chuang, generally speaking, he was hungry and wanted to eat. As a priest, how can you just sit back and watch innocent people being harmed by demons, not to mention, eliminating demons is the priest's job, yes, that's how it is. Lu Chuang followed without any hesitation, while finding a reason for his stalking behavior. He wasn't worried about getting lost, the unpleasant smell had already been locked by him, and he could smell it a few streets away. Twilight Falls, Brooklyn, Stoke neighborhood. Lu Chuang stopped, looking at the open bar not far away. He could smell a lingering scent, Lorna should be inside. Without further ado, Lu Chuang walked into the bar. Immediately afterwards, he heard a deafening electronic sound, dazzling colored lights flickered above his head, and on the spacious dance floor, countless heads were shaking restless bodies, and the air was always filled with a strong smell of marijuana. Stink. Lu Chuang glanced around the bar, but did not see Lorna for a while. So he walked to the bar, waved his hand, and called the bartender over. Sir, what would you like to drink? Give me a whole cup of Erguotu. Just as the bartender was about to speak, he suddenly saw Lu Chuang wearing a priest's black robe. Have even believers in God fallen? Lu Chuang sat at the bar and continued to observe. The lights in this bar were very dim, only fancy lights flickering constantly, but this did not affect Lu Chuang's perception. The souls of everyone in the bar came into view, some of them the soul caught his attention. It's not like the translucent white soul of normal people. The souls of these people are not humanoid, viscous and foul-smelling, just a pile of rotten meat. Thick black mist exudes from the whole body. I have to say that this kind of picture is so visually impactful. If the camera didn't work, Lu Chuang would have wanted to record it and send it to Wade, so that the other party would know that there are uglier things in this world than him. Lu Chuang smelled it, blue cheese mixed with canned herring, this smell is so right. It seems that Lorna came to this place, so she was contaminated with the breath of these souls. So the question is, what are these people? Lu Chuang withdrew his gaze and rubbed his eyes with some discomfort. The lights in the bar were so harsh that now his eyes were all colorful. Seeing the black brother next to him wearing sunglasses, Lu Chuang patted him on the shoulder. Brother, do you sell your sunglasses? Hey man, don't come find fault. This black brother has a full face and tattoos on his arms. As a black man who suffers from discrimination, he thinks that Lu Chuang is looking for trouble on purpose. He wants to teach Lu Chuang a lesson, but when he sees Lu Chuang, he suddenly widened his eyes. Father, it's you, why are you here? Quote question mark quote. Lu Chuang looked puzzled, and saw the black brother take off his sunglasses, 
I am the priest, have you forgotten, we met in church before. Seeing the black brother's face, Lu Chuang remembered, isn't this the black believer in the church? In the afternoon, I didn't notice that I was wearing a coat. I thought he was a pious ordinary believer, but I didn't expect that he was still a martial artist after taking off his coat. Lu Chuang instantly entered the priest's personality, and said with a gentle smile, Definitely I have not forgotten, my child, every child who believes in the Lord is in my heart, and I will never forget it. The lights of the bar shone on Lu Chuang, and the Black Brothers knew that it was a holy light. Although the holy light looked colorful, the Black Brothers were still deeply touched and no longer wondered why Lu Chuang appeared here. He clasped his hands together and clenched his fists as if praying, and said reverently, Father, you are a great man. R. This scene is perfectly normal in a church, but why is it so unsuitable in Barry? Since we are acquaintances, let me just say it straight, I need your sunglasses. No problem, if you like this pair of sunglasses, I'll give you this pair of sunglasses, priest, if you want something to drink, just order me as a treat. What an embarrassment, Lu Chuang immediately put on his sunglasses, and said to the bartender, bring me a glass of the largest whiskey, and credit this generous believer. Father is a drinker, that's definitely, bartender. Damn priests, damn believers, if the church is full of such things, it will be over sooner or later. So she's here, in the entertainment area of the bar, Lu Chuang saw Lorna's figure. Seeing that the other party was playing billiards with a blonde man, Lu Chuang narrowed his eyes slightly, and he could see that the man's soul was also rotten flesh emitting a foul smell. After saying goodbye to the Black Brothers, Lu Chuang picked up the whiskey and walked over. Despair, Lorna took the club and hit the white ball neatly. Following the inertia, the white ball crashed into another billiard ball, trying to knock it into the corner pocket, but the direction was a little bit off. The billiard ball was moving slowly, and when it was about to hit the corner and bounce back, Lorna's fingertips suddenly flashed a green light, and the billiard ball that was off track rolled on the spot, turned a corner and returned to the right track, and then fell into the corner pocket. Lorna looked up at the blonde man. You lost, according to the agreement, you should pay me 500 United States dollars. Damn it, the billiard ball turns automatically. The blonde man's eyes widened in disbelief. How fresh, bullets can turn, what's so strange about the ball turning? When a familiar voice came, Lorna turned her head and looked over, and was stunned for a moment. At the moment Lu Chuang, who was wearing a priest's black robe, was wearing sunglasses, holding an oversized whiskey in his hand, his body was swaying with the dynamic music, and he walked towards them with rebellious steps. The blonde man was also stunned, this priest played quite wildly. It's you, Lorna recognized Lu Chuang and said in shock, why are you here? Look at you asking this question, can't you tell, obviously I'm here to exorcise demons. Lu Chuang took a big sip of whiskey, his face turned red, and he almost couldn't hold back his mouth, but fortunately, the self-healing ability instantly helped him get the alcohol out of his system. Lorna, sorry, I didn't see it. Hearing Lu Chuang's words, the blonde man's complexion changed slightly, but seeing Lu Chuang's completely unreliable look, he instantly dispelled the suspicion in his heart, and looked at Lorna suspiciously. Is this priest your friend? Do not know. Lorna immediately denied it, staring at Lu Chuang with strange eyes, could it be that you followed me here? How is it possible? Lu Chuang naturally wouldn't admit it, and explained, I just happened to pass by, and I felt that there was a devil's breath here, and it stinks very badly, so I came in looking for it. The corners of Lorna's eyes twitched, this is going to end. Didn't seem to notice Lorna's expression, Lu Chuang said seriously, don't worry, with me here, those demons can't hurt anyone, you may not know, in fact, exorcism is a compulsory course in our church, and I'm the chief practitioner student and has studied for more than two and a half years. So, father, are you here to exorcise demons? The blonde man laughed. Exactly. But why didn't I see your exorcism tools, not even a cross? The blonde man took a look at Lu Chuang, wearing a black robe all over his body, so clean that he didn't look like he was here to exorcise demons. Lu Chuang smiled and said, I am proficient in all kinds of powerful spells, even mere demons are no problem at all, not to mention, I brought the holy water from our church, no matter how powerful the demons are, they will not be afraid. Lorna and the blonde man looked at the whiskey in Lu Chuang's hand. This holy water is quite strong. 
Under the speechless gaze of the two, Lu Chuang took a sip of the whiskey version of holy water. By the way, what are you guys playing, how about adding me? Snooker, 500 United States dollars a sentence, are you interested? Before Lorna spoke, a red light flashed in the eyes of the blonde man, pretending to be indifferent. Lu Chuang shook his head, and said in an anti-client manner, 500 United States dollars is too little, 2000 United States dollars per game. Are all priests so rich? No problem. The blonde man nodded decisively in agreement, and turned to look at Lorna. Wait a minute, your 500 United States dollars will be given to you later, Wang Lizhao won't waste too much time. Lorna glanced at the clock on the wall, and replied indifferently, hurry up. Before the game started, he seemed to think of something, the blonde man joked, Father, you don't know how to turn billiards, do you? Our church doesn't teach this. That puts my mind at ease. Despair, the blonde-haired man took the shot first, smashing all the billiard balls with one shot, it's your turn, father. Lu Chuang put down the whiskey in his hand, picked up Lorna's pole, walked to the billiard table, and bent down slowly. Bullet time is on. Tap, tap, meow, meow, meow. Lu Chuang directly made a miracle with all his strength, the white ball scrambled wildly on the table, hitting the target billiard balls from all directions into the corner pockets with incomparable precision. When the white ball stopped, only a small half of the billiard balls remained on the table. Blonde man, Lorna, despair, as the last billiard ball fell into the corner pocket, Lu Chuang stood up cheerfully, I won, give me money. The blonde man had a complicated expression. Father, you are not a professional player, are you? How is it possible, I am the worst one in our church, how can I be qualified to be a professional player? Don't people in your church do business? Lu Chuang took a sip of whiskey holy water and spread his hands, give me money. Seeing Lu Chuang's face that desperately wanted money, Lorna was a little speechless. She thought it was fake that Lu Chuang came to exorcise demons, and it was real to come to the bar to have fun. She rolled her eyes, then looked at the blonde man and said lightly, I the money should be given. The blonde man smiled helplessly. I don't have that much cash, but my companions are nearby, let's go find them together, and I'll return the money to you when the time comes. Lorna frowned, and her heart became vigilant. You can tell your companions to come over. They have something to do, and they definitely don't want to come over. Definitely, if you don't worry that I will run away, I can find them by myself. Just wait here for me. When the blonde man said this, he didn't say anything, and it was obvious that he would run away if the two of them didn't follow. Lorna felt more and more wrong, just when she was about to say something, Lu Chuang suddenly grabbed the blonde man's arm, and said impatiently, then what are you waiting for, hurry up and find your companion, 2000 USD is worth one for me the monthly salary is already paid, but it can't just disappear like this. After speaking, Lu Chuang dragged the blonde man out of the entertainment room. Is this guy getting into money? Watching Lu Chuang and the blonde man gradually walk away, Lorna took a deep breath and followed them. They're here. The blonde man pushed open the back door of the bar and brought Lu Chuang and Lorna to the alley behind the bar. Lorna walked at the end, and whispered to Lu Chuang, this person has a problem. Lu Chuang wondered, don't you know each other? Who knows him? I just heard that there are people here who pay to play snooker, so I come here to earn a little pocket money. Lorna inadvertently started to talk too much. Realizing this, she quickly stopped and said in a muffled voice, Anyway, this person is definitely not a good person. If you find something wrong, I advise you to run away. She wasn't worried that she would be in danger, but she didn't think it was necessary for Lu Chuang to be involved. After all, it was about her and the blonde man from the beginning, and Lu Chuang was just a passerby who got in for no reason. Lu Chuang nodded. BDEH I knew it a long time ago, because he is a demon, and I smell an evil breath. When do you still say such things? Lorna was convinced, she felt that Lu Chuang was probably unreliable, and it seemed that she could only rely on herself. When the two walked into the alley, they immediately felt several eyes staring at them. They saw a man and a woman slowly walking out from the corner of the alley. Under the faint streetlights, there were two pale faces. Those two pairs of scarlet eyes stared at Lu Chuang and Lorna firmly, like a hungry wolf staring at its prey, the gazes of this couple were full of naked greed. 
In Lu Chuang's eyes, the souls of these two people are just like the blonde man's carrion, and they seem to be the companions that the blonde man said. Mark, this is different from what was agreed, why is there an extra, priest? Seeing Lu Chuang's strange outfit, the carrion girl said with some uncertainty, maybe because of her lack of knowledge, it was the first time she saw a priest wearing sunglasses and drinking whiskey. The blonde man turned his head to look at Lu Chuang, with a cruel smile on the corner of his mouth, he appeared suddenly, and he just tricked him into coming here, so we can enjoy two meals, it seems that tonight is our lucky day. Quote, You're right, let's say it first, I want to be the first to enjoy the priest's blood. The carrion woman couldn't help but licked her tongue, showing her sharp fangs. Seeing such obvious features, Lu Chuang instantly understood that these things are the legendary vampires. She looks like a dog on the outside, but she didn't expect her soul to be so ugly. In that case, that pretty girl is mine. The carrion man laughed a few times, his body suddenly exploded, and he rushed over from the front, much faster than ordinary people, and rushed towards Lorna impatiently. Although Lorna was taken aback by the carrion man's ferocious appearance, she didn't react too slowly. Green lights emerged from her hands, and the trash can in the corner of the alley smashed towards the carrion man as if drawn by some kind of force. Boom, the carrion man was unprepared and was directly smashed in midair. The blonde man and the carrion girl were taken aback. Seeing Lorna's hands surrounded by green light, the blonde man exclaimed, Damn it, this girl is actually a mutant. Damn it, no wonder the billiard ball can turn, so she secretly cheated. The carrion girl glanced at him, did you miss the point? Lorna's complexion was very bad, she didn't expect that these guys were not human at all, and the speed was so amazing that she subconsciously used her mutant ability to choose to protect herself zero. Now her mutant identity was exposed by the other party on the spot. According to America's Mutant Act, if someone reports her, she may face the risk of being arrested. The carrion man who was knocked down quickly got up, without any scars on his body, and said unscrupulously, mutant. Or is it worse? Hearing the carrion man's words, Lorna gritted her teeth, the green light of her hands became more dazzling, and the manhole cover under her feet suddenly floated up to block her. Her mutant ability is to manipulate magnetic fields, and metal objects are easier to manipulate. Stop talking nonsense, kill this mutant quickly, this is Dickon Firth's territory, if there is a big commotion, we will be in trouble. The blonde man urged. He reached out and took off the contact lenses from his eyes, revealing a pair of blood-red pupils. Apparently, the blonde man is also a vampire. Lorna didn't have much combat experience, and she couldn't help but feel a little flustered when she saw the three vampires staring at her. After all, it was a matter of life and death, and it was really difficult for her, a young girl, to get used to it. She looked at Lu Chuang next to her, and said anxiously, Run, these people are dangerous, just get out of here. Tun Tun, Lu Chuang took a sip of whiskey and said calmly, Don't worry, I'm a professional exorcist. Exorcism, the carrion man looked at Lu Chuang. He was neither tall nor strong, and he didn't have any props on his body. He laughed disdainfully. Father, where is your cross and your Bible? Without these, what do you use to exorcise demons? Use this. A pistol appeared in Lu Chuang's hand instantly, the mana was attached to the bullet, and he shot at the carrion man without any hesitation. Boom, the carrion man was headshot on the spot. Before everyone could react, the carrion man turned into a pile of ashes and disappeared. Carrion man is dead. The moment the bullet was shot into his body, the mana attached to it took the opportunity to rush into his soul, like sparks falling into an oil drum, the soul of that rotten flesh was instantly ignited, trembling crazily. Lu Chuang faintly heard the howl of the carrion man's soul, and was completely burned by the mana, and his body also burned at a speed that the naked eye could not catch. Not even the clothes on his body were burned to residue, not even ashes residual. Needless to say, these vampires died quite environmentally friendly, leaving no garbage behind. Lu Chuang was a little surprised. He just wanted to try to add magic to the bullet to see what would happen, but he didn't expect the effect to be so significant. The vampire died without even the ability to resist. Ha, huh, more mana. After purifying the carrion man, Lu Chuang could feel a slight change in the mana in his body, and there was actually a little more mana, although it didn't seem obvious. Apparently, killing a vampire also increases his mana. Thinking of this, 
Lu Chuang looked at the remaining two vampires with fiery eyes. For him, the more mana is definitely the better, anyway, it won't do him any harm. 43. Looking at the location where the carrion man disappeared, the blonde man and the carrion woman full face. Even Lorna was amazed. She thought it would be a hard battle, but as soon as Lu Chuang came up, he directly eliminated one of the enemies, bringing the numbers of both sides to a balanced state. This made Lorna feel relieved, but at the same time, she couldn't help but feel sorry for Lu Chuang, identity curious. Are you really here to exorcise demons? Definitely. Lu Chuang was wearing a priest's black robe, holding a technological pistol in his hand, and said seriously, I even brought the strongest exorcism tool from our church, I didn't even look at it. Come, Lorna is confused, has your church always done exorcism like this? As for the blonde man and the carrion woman, they stood there trembling. Originally, they thought they were hunters while Lu Chuang and Lorna were both prey. Now the situation has suddenly reversed. On the contrary, they have become prey. For some reason, they always felt that Lu Chuang's eyes were a bit piercing. It's sterling silver, he added sterling silver to the bullet. The blonde man's forehead was covered with cold sweat, and his voice trembled, this guy is a vampire hunter. You know, vampires are very difficult creatures to kill, and ordinary weapons have no effect on them. Even powerful gun bullets can still cause limited damage to them, and the vampire's body can recover quickly after being destroyed, so they won't be afraid even of humans holding guns. Unless pure silver is added to the bullet, this substance that completely restrains vampires can cause irreparable damage to them. As far as the blonde man knew, this method of filling bullets with silver was usually only done by vampire hunters who specialize in hunting vampires. He thought Lu Chuang in front of him was a vampire hunter. Lu Chuang corrected. I am a priest, not a vampire hunter, I am the chief trainee of exorcism who has studied for more than two and a half years, and this is always just one of my many powerful spells. Facing the black muzzle of the gun, the blonde man and the carrion woman swallowed. You call this a spell? Lu Chuang came to the two vampires, smiled and asked kindly, Tell me, what's going on in this bar and why there are so many vampires in it? The blonde man hesitated, seeing Lu Chuang's finger on the trigger, he quickly said, This bar is Dick and Firth's private property, and it is open to all vampires. We can use reasonable means to take away the humans inside, so as to as our food. Hearing this, Lorna looked a little angry, feeling that she was being used as food by these vampires. Lu Chuang asked curiously, who is Dickon Firth? The carrion girl then explained, he is the leader of the new generation of vampires of the Vlad family, and he is very powerful. Lu Chuang understood, it means Jin been among vampires. Go to hell, vampire hunter. Seeing Lu Chuang getting closer and closer, the carrion girl suddenly rioted. They may not be able to defeat Lu Chuang at a long distance, but at close range, vampires are not afraid of weak humans. The carrion girl thought so, and the moment she was about to touch Lu Chuang, a fist with strong mana suddenly broke into her sight. Stupid. The carrion girl was directly thrown into the air, rolling on the ground like crazy, screaming miserably. The blonde man looked over in horror and saw that a large piece of skin had been corroded on the carrion woman's face, and even the pale bones inside could be seen. The other party obviously used bullets without pure silver, how could they hurt their vampires? Lu Chuang sighed, and said helplessly, Why do you say this is so important? I have already said that I know magic spells. Didn't you take the initiative to send them here for a draw? As he spoke, Lu Chuang attached mana to his right leg, and suddenly stomped on carrion woman's head. Bones to pieces, the carrion girl's head corroded and exploded, instantly turning into ashes, and Lu Chuang's mana increased a bit. What a cruel priest, is this AF king murderer? The blonde man knelt down resolutely, and begged, Father, I know I was wrong, please let me go, you may not know, but I am also a believer of the Lord, and what I believe in is God. Lu Chuang was immediately happy. With your status, I'm afraid you can't even go into the church. Lu Chuang patted the blonde man on the shoulder, and asked with a smile, Do you have any money? Asterisk 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 asterisk. The blonde man nodded repeatedly. Yes, I have a thousand USD on me. Take it out. The blonde man obediently took out the money. After Lu Chuang took it, 
he asked blankly, Father, is this considered robbery? How come, this money is donated by you to the church, not to me, I just keep it instead, why? Lu Chuang smiled slightly, and handed the whiskey over, come on, this is your believer's welfare. After drinking this cup of holy water, you and I are both members of the church. The blonde man was a little scared. Now that Lu Chuang's identity has been confirmed, the holy water he mentioned is probably not a simple thing. Maybe the whiskey is just its surface, maybe this is really a glass of blessed holy water. The blonde man braced himself and sniffed the glass of whiskey, only to smell the smell of alcohol. After a moment of hesitation, the blonde man dipped his hand into some wine and put it in his mouth to taste. This taste, isn't that just normal whiskey? Confirmed, this is not holy water at all, but a glass of whiskey. The blonde man took Lu Chuang's whiskey, laughed boldly and said, Ha ha ha, priest, I've drained this cup of holy water, you can do whatever you want, and worship God. Tun, tun, tun. The blonde man gulped down the whiskey and soon reached the bottom of the bottle. He wiped the wine stains from the corner of his mouth, and shouted, Good wine. As soon as the words fell, the whole person burned instantly and turned into ashes, and the wine glass fell to the ground. Quote dot 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 quote. What is the sense of sight of this hero ending scene? Is this really holy water? Seeing the scene where the blonde man set himself on fire, Lorna opened her mouth slightly. Lu Chuang proudly said, Yes, this is the holy water I personally prepared, and the exorcism effect is amazing. He was right, this cup of holy water was indeed prepared by himself, because he added some mana to the whiskey, but the effect was not bad. After killing the three vampires, Lu Chuang could feel that the magic power in his body increased significantly. Lu Chuang turned his head to look at the bar, and suddenly had an idea in his heart. Green Elf, do you want some money? Lu Chuang grabbed the 1000 USD given by the blonde man and waved it in front of Lorna like a dog. Lorna's eyelids twitched, she gritted her teeth and said, my name is Lorna, not a green elf. Almost, Lu Chuang continued to shake the dollar bills, and smiled, I think you seem to be able to control the metal, why don't we cooperate, and then our profits will be shared equally. Seeing that Lu Chuang didn't care about her mutant status at all, Lorna felt a little more relaxed. To be honest, she was really worried that Lu Chuang would report her. After all, many ordinary people discriminated against mutant. Although she is not sure whether Lu Chuang belongs to the category of, of ordinary people. Lorna crossed her arms and said, What do you want to do? Let's say yes first, I will not do illegal things. You think too much, I'm a priest, how could I do something illegal? Lu Chuang looked at Lorna with an absurd expression, thinking that Lorna must have misunderstood him. He he, Lorna made no comment, don't worry, it's very simple, I guarantee it won't be difficult. Gentlemen, if I could take a moment of your time, I would like to speak to you about our God and Savior. In the bar, a man was looking around when he suddenly saw a priest wearing sunglasses coming, his body was shaking with the dynamic music, and his speech was in a certain rhythm. The man was speechless, he didn't know whether to say that the other party was not doing his job properly or dedicated. You say he is dedicated, but a priest is having such a good time in a bar. You can say that he is not doing his job properly, but he never forgets to preach to others when he is having such a good time. Facing a stranger's initiative to strike up a conversation, the man didn't show any impatience on his face, but instead smiled strangely, definitely yes, I happen to be very interested in God, why don't we go to a quieter place to talk in detail? Okay, sir, follow me. The priest walked away with a dancing posture, and the man followed with a smile on his face. When the man followed the priest to the corner of the bar, the man squinted his eyes and was about to see if anyone was passing by, but he found that the priest took a step ahead, shaking his head and looking around like a thief. Just when the man was feeling puzzled, he suddenly felt his limbs tighten, his hands and feet were tightly bound by metal objects, and even his neck was locked by an iron rod. The man showed a look of panic, not knowing what happened, he could only look at the priest in front of him. Father, what does this mean? Don't worry, these are some necessary means of preaching in our church, and there is nothing dangerous. Ah, then why are you taking my wallet? Lu Chuang took out all the banknotes from the man's wallet, his expression was joyful, and then became serious. This is my baptism for you, which means to eliminate the original sin, 
the original sin and all punishments, and money is the root of all evil, which is a felony. Now I have helped you get rid of this sin, so you don't need to thank me. FK Original Sin I only know the crime of robbery, and now your behavior is robbery. The man was burning with anger, but accidentally glanced at a pile of ashes in the corner, and immediately showed what he thought was the most friendly and sincere smile in his life. Thank you, Father, you are so great, that, now can you tell me about God, I can't wait to hear it. Lu Chuang smiled slightly. Well, then I will send you to God and let him tell you personally. Under the man's terrified eyes, Lu Chuang raised a metal dagger with mana and pierced it into the man's head. The man couldn't even scream, and his whole body was reduced to a pile of ashes. Green Elf, come out to wash the floor. I've said it so many times. My name is Lorna, Lorna, not Green Elf. Lorna stepped out from the corner, with a green light on her fingertips, skillfully controlling a broom with a metal handle, sweeping the ashes on the ground to the corner. Almost, Lu Chuang smiled and gave half of the money in his hand to Lorna. According to the agreement, we will get five to five points. That guy named Faith is really a good guy. He actually set up such a perfect place for us. These stupid vampires came here by themselves after seducing them a few times. This wave earned blood. Confirmed, this greedy guy is definitely not out to exorcise demons. Seeing Lu Chuang standing there counting the money with a happy face, Lorna looked disdainful and scoffed at this behavior. Then, she lowered her head and counted the banknotes in her hand. It doesn't mean anything else, it's just that I can't trust this priest with a bad personality. After all, this is my hard-earned money, after all, I have to be more cautious. Which one is this? Lu Chuang did some calculations, and this is already the 13th vampire they killed secretly. During this period, his mana has increased by about one-tenth of the original, and the growth rate is still very obvious. Brushing monsters increases the sense of experience. Lu Chuang waved his hand. Keep going, let's brush the copy all night tonight, whoever walks is the dog. Hurry up, I'm in a hurry. Lorna said impatiently, if it wasn't for the money. Dot for the sake of solving vampires and eliminating harm for the people, she would have gone home to rest a long time ago, why would she stay in such a ghostly place for so long? Lu Chuang nodded, and continued to run into the bar to find the target. Sir, if I could take a moment of your time, I would like to speak to you about our God and Savior. Among the huge amounts of villas, a blonde young man was sitting by the pool. He was holding a wine glass, shaking the blood-red viscous liquid, and his posture was full of pretentious aristocratic etiquette. And he was surrounded by two women with blood-red pupils, the fangs in their mouths were stained with scarlet blood, and they pressed against the young man to continuously generate friction. At this time, a strong man came over, leaned into the young man's ear and whispered, Fez, there is a problem with a property on our site. Under the faint light, Faith's skin looked extremely pale. He took a sip of the blood-red liquid in the wine glass, and said lazily, what's the problem this time? Are those idiots doing business and being discovered by the guests, or are there troubles? The movement attracted the police. It's not surprising that these things happen, every once in a while something happens in his industry. However, Faith is not worried about this. After all, the police also have their people, that is, the group of human beings who dream of becoming vampires. In order to have the ability of immortality, many people are willing to sell their bodies or even soul, let alone become a vampire's slave. In Faith's eyes, vampires are the higher races. And human beings are nothing but their slaves and food. The strong man shook his head. No, it's our people who discovered that many vampires in the bar suddenly disappeared. Hearing the strong man's words, Faith's eyes flashed with blood, he immediately pushed the two women away, stared at the strong man and asked, what's going on, did Daywalker appear again? It's not clear, all the monitors in the bar were damaged, and we couldn't find a specific reason. However, according to the guests at the bar, some people seemed to see a broom sweeping dust in the corner that night, some heard green elves or something, and some even saw a green ghostly figure, plus a large number of vampires suddenly disappeared in the bar. The muscular man had a strange expression. Nowadays there are rumors about a witch with a long nose and green skin. The vampires are worried that there is a witch hunting vampires. They are too scared to come to our bar. Faith's expression froze, with an expression of, you're f-king kidding me. It's their vampires territory. 
Even if urban legends are mostly about vampires, where did this witch come from? The most outrageous thing about is that a group of vampires are actually afraid of a witch in a fairy tale. Should I praise you for your childlike innocence? Faith took a deep breath and asked, how about the group of humans, were they also scared away by the so-called witches? That's not true. After hearing the legend of the witch, those human beings came here more happily. Every day, some YouTube celebrities come to our bar to shoot videos, just to witness the legendary witch with their own eyes, and then upload them to the YouTube account to attract fans. Quote, Faith, well, these humans are bolder than their vampires, do humans like to die so much? The strong man continued, Fez, the daily benefits of our bar are almost more than the combined benefits of other industries. The family suggested that we change the bar into an internet celebrity bar, and hire some famous YouTube internet celebrities to go to the bar. There will be a live broadcast in the store. The corner of Faith's mouth twitched, which businessman came up with this idea, it makes a damn sense. But, making their noble vampires serve humans. FK it. Don't even think about it. What the hell, that bar owned by a vampire has now become a mecca for online celebrity check-ins, even the name has changed from the bloody bar to the witch's bar, and the icon is still the long-nosed green-skinned witch from fairy tales. After three days, Lu Chuang listened to what Lorna slowly narrated on the phone, with a dumbfounded expression. Who the hell came up with this idea? So F. King creative. Lu Chuang never imagined that there are crouching dragons and phoenixes hidden among the vampires, so he transformed the vampire's hunting ground into a holy place for online celebrity check-in, and directly changed the horror painting style to the earthy painting style. Why don't you find a vampire to live broadcast headshots for veterans, and guarantee that it will be popular all over the world the next day? It was difficult for Lu Chuang to accept this reality for a while, but Lorna on the other end of the phone couldn't bear it anymore. An angry voice came from the phone. You bastard priest. I've said it countless times, my name is Lorna, Lorna, if I'm not green elf, you just won't listen. Well, here comes a damn witch legend, and now the bar has become a 13 internet celebrity bar, and all those vampires are gone. My pocket money is gone. From Lorna's words, it can be seen how angry she is at the moment, and she even forgot to cover up her true thoughts. Since the bar had their own harvest, Lu Chuang and Lorna made an appointment to go to that bar every night to hunt vampires, Lu Chuang was in charge of seduction, Lorna was in charge of control, and then Lu Chuang was in charge of harvesting, and finally the two shared the small money equally. Although their cooperation is becoming more and more tacit, it is inevitable that people will find out if they do this kind of thing too much, especially Lorna's hair color is hard to avoid being noticed. As the person concerned, it is actually not difficult to guess what the truth of this witch legend is. Even so, Lorna could not accept this fact. Not to mention her, there must be no girl who can accept her image, which looks like a witch with green skin, long nose, and wrinkled skin in the Wizard of Green Rice. Now Lorna can't even imagine what kind of scene it will be if she is found to be a legendary witch, it will be a scene of social death. And Lorna heard that many mutants have their own code names. So what should she be called, witch? This code name sounds like a super evil villain. The more Lorna thought about it, the angrier she became, she wished she could directly strangle Lu Chuang's neck through the phone. Hearing Lorna's worry, Lu Chuang comforted. It's okay, now only I know that you are that witch, and I promise I won't tell it. Except for the two of us, no third person will know that you are a witch. What witch, is it the witch legend that has become popular on YouTube recently? Next to him, the little Peter who was doing exercises suddenly raised his head and exclaimed, My God, you even know a witch. Could it be that she is also a superhero? Little Peter's voice was unusually loud, and Lu Chuang could clearly feel that Lorna on the other end of the phone paused for a few seconds. You bastard God, toot toot. Lu Chuang hung up the phone directly, he was afraid that if he continued speaking, Lorna would turn into a green titan hulk in anger. However, Lu Chuang couldn't help feeling a little pity when he heard that the bar owned by the vampire was gone. After three days of struggle, the mana in his body has increased by nearly half. There is just one problem. For the application of mana, Lu Chuang is still stuck in the rough technique of attaching weapons or other people. He instinctively thinks that there will be a better way to use it, but he just has no clue. In this regard, Lu Chuang already has plans. 
he knows that there are real spells in the Marvel world. Maybe he can learn the corresponding skills when he finds those spells. Putting down the phone, Lu Chuang looked at Little Peter with a smile. Little Peter, why don't you have time to play with the computer recently? Do you think there are too few exercises? It just so happens that I made a small amount of money as a big brother recently, why don't I give you 30 kilograms? Let's treat it as an early birthday present. Little Peter almost missed his pen. He hasn't finished half of the 30-pound exercises that Lu Chuang sent before, and now the weight unit has been doubled, which is killing him. Little Peter quickly raised his hand and explained, I use the computer for a reason. It's the design drawing of the steel armor. I want to check the price of the materials, but I found that those materials are a bit expensive. Lu Chuang curled his lips in disdain. As a millionaire, he was fearless and patted his chest and said, Little Peter, you may not know me very well. I have nothing good about me. I just have money, and I can use money to solve the problem. It's not a problem, just give me a number, how much will it cost in total? Really, that's great, I roughly calculated, it's not much, only 50 million United States dollars is enough. Lu Chuang suddenly fell silent. After a long time, Lu Chuang slowly said, I suddenly feel that my self-awareness is still not clear enough, you continue to do exercises here and I will go out to blow the air. The little Peter looked at Lu Chuang in confusion, only feeling that the other person's back seemed a little lonely. He was young and didn't know. The collapse of adults is often just a moment. Weasel, I'm out of money. In Sister Margaret's bar, Lu Chuang put the pistol on the table with a snap and said bluntly. The weasel widened his eyes and said in a panic, it's useless if you want to rob me. I'm just a poor man. If you want to rob, go and rob that guy Wade. He must have money. If you need it, I can also tell you where he lives. As expected of a good brother, facing Lu Chuang's threat, Weasel resolutely sold Wade. What a mess, Lu Chuang explained. I mean, I want to go back to work and continue to be my mercenary, so you quickly introduce me to the commission. Hearing Lu Chuang's words, Weasel breathed a sigh of relief. You said it earlier, you almost scared me to death. I saw you pulled out your gun, and thought you were trying to rob me. How is it possible, I know your home address, if I want it, won't I just break through the door and take it directly? Seeing that the weasel didn't speak, Lu Chuang said anxiously, quickly find out if anyone else wants to offer me a reward, preferably a high reward. The weasel was startled, it wasn't the first time he saw someone wishing to be rewarded by the island. He shook his head, no, since that time you were caught, Ah, I mean after you caught yourself, there is no news of a bounty on you. Lu Chuang secretly thought it was a pity, it seems that this shortcut to get quick money is impossible. Well, I'm just asking casually, it doesn't mean anything else, has Wade been offered a reward? Dot 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 dot. I know what you want to do, but unfortunately, no. Quote. By the way, I remember that you and Wade made a lot of money a while ago, how long has it passed, why are you suddenly short of money? Forget it, I wanted a bigger figure, but in the end I couldn't afford it. It's just a toy, how much is it worth? Not much, just 50 million United States dollars. The weasel looked skeptical about life. Is it because I can't keep up with the times, and now the figures are so valuable? Lu Chuang sighed. In fact, he also forgot that the price of making a set of steel armor is not cheap. The material of the steel armor is the top aviation material. For a big rich like Tony Stark, this amount of money is naturally not a problem. They make dozens of sets every minute and blow them up in the air as fireworks. But the problem is that now Lu Chuang's total assets are not even a fraction of Tony Stark's. Lu Chuang has made some calculations, and with his current funds, he can at most make a steel crotch. Well, it seems that the world is changing too fast. Weasel shrugged and then skillfully took out a stack of black cards, these are high-paying tasks, you can see for yourself. Lu Chuang flipped through the black cards, skipping those that didn't meet the requirements, and soon saw an interesting commission. Target. Frank Amick. Commissioned content. Kill the drug Lord Amick, and the range of activities is in New York. Remuneration. 5 million USD. Just seeing the name of the commission target, Lu Chuang thought it was Frank the Punisher, but after looking back, he realized that it was a drug lord in New York. I took this commission. Seeing this generous reward, 
Lu Chuang chose this commission without thinking too much. The weasel glanced at the black card, showing an inexplicable expression. Wait a minute, the situation of this entrustment is a bit special. Special. Well, before accepting the entrustment, the employer has a special requirement, that is, he wants to personally confirm the strength of the entrusting party. Only after passing the test can he accept the entrustment. Hearing what the weasel said, Lu Chuang was a little surprised. According to her, usually employers hide behind the scenes to issue commissions, trying to ensure that they do not reveal their identities, but this employer jumped out and asked to confirm the strength of the mercenaries. This is the first time he has heard of such a thing. In view of the strangeness of the commission, Lu Chuang couldn't help asking, are you sure there is no problem with the commission this time? Lu Chuang has not forgotten the commission to sabotage the gangster's deal. The reward was only 100,000 yuan, so he took on a risk of tens of millions. Although Boss Jin made compensation afterwards, this kind of entrustment that is full of scams can still be avoided as much as possible. The weasel knew that Lu Chuang was worried, and said helplessly, you can rest assured this time, because some of us have already taken over the commission before you, but they were all driven back by the employer because their strength is not up to standard. An employer also specifically contacted me, saying that there is no need to contact him if you will be like this in the future. Lu Chuang immediately became interested when he heard this, he had no choice but to see such an arrogant person with his own eyes. It's all said and done, as the leader of Sister Margaret's bar, it seems that I have to accept this commission. Weasel is speechless, when did you become the leader here, do other mercenaries know about this? However, Weasel also knows Lu Chuang's strength. In a sense, Lu Chuang can indeed be regarded as the number one in their sister Margaret's bar, and alongside him as the number two Wade. Okay, I'll contact the employer right away. In the outskirts, a deserted construction site. The location mentioned by the employer should be here. At the moment Lu Chuang was wearing a black hooded jacket. The hood and a black mask covered his entire head, only revealing two dark eye sockets. According to the designated location required by the employer, he walked into the construction site. After all, he was meeting an unknown employer, so he still had to cover up. But the question is, why does he feel that this place looks familiar? Hey, are you the mercenary who accepted the commission this time? A pretentiously deep and sweet child's voice came from behind. Lu Chuang turned his head to look and saw a purple-haired little girl in a purple leather jacket with a black eye patch standing behind her, at first glance she looked like a little guy imitating a superhero. However, she was firmly holding a modified pistol in her hand. From her standard gun-holding posture, it can be seen that this little girl has definitely received professional firearms training. Being pointed at by the gun, Lu Chuang didn't feel nervous at all, and said cheerfully, yes, then you must be the employer, right? You're smart, it looks like you're better than the previous ones. Seeing that Lu Chuang didn't question her identity, the purple-haired little girl was very satisfied. She put away her pistol and said, However, I still have to test your strength. Well, how do you want to test it? Why don't I give you a set of lightning five consecutive whips? Lu Chuang rolled up his sleeves, planning to give the rich lowly boss the whole job. Etc. The purple-haired little girl quickly stopped, she felt that this new mercenary seemed a little excited. You are a mercenary, right? First of all, it definitely depends on your marksmanship. No, where is your gun? As a mercenary, do you do missions without a gun? The purple-haired girl looked at Lu Chuang, after confirming that he did not see any traces of firearms, said in a panic. So you wanted to see this, I told you earlier, my gun is here. Lu Chuang waved his arm, and instantly there were two more pistols in his hands. He had long been proficient in the skill of spear concealment. With the two pistols hidden on his body, outsiders could not see any traces at all. Cool, it seems that you do have some strength. Seeing this scene, the purple-haired little girl was a little surprised, then pointed well to the distance and said, See those bottles, as long as you hit them all with a pistol, you will be considered as passing the first level. Lu Chuang looked in the direction, and there were four glass bottles placed horizontally about a hundred meters away. For ordinary gunmen, it is really difficult to hit these bottles with a pistol with a short range at this distance. No problem handsome. After saying that, Lu Chuang swung his right hand sharply, and the bullet escaped. Before the purple-haired girl saw the movement clearly, 
she saw four glass bottles shatter from right to left. With a gunshot, four glass bottles shattered. This. The purple-haired little girl stared wide-eyed, as if she couldn't accept the scene in front of her. At this moment, she seemed to remember something, and suddenly turned her head to look at Lu Chuang. Wait, I remember you, you're that superhero. That's right, it's me. Lu Chuang took off his mask and hood, and directly revealed his true face. After seeing Lu Chuang's appearance, the purple-haired little girl exclaimed, It's really you. As she spoke, she also took off the black mask. The other party was the little lowly Mindy that Lu Chuang had seen before. From the beginning of seeing this outfit, Lu Chuang already knew that the other party was Mindy. Same place, same two people. The only difference is that there is one missing big daddy, the werewolf who pointed a gun at his daughter. Lu Chuang asked curiously, why don't you see your father? Hearing his words, Mindy's eyes dimmed instantly, and he said in a low mood, Big Daddy, is dead, it's Frank Amick who did it. Amick killed my mother, and Big Daddy and I have always wanted to avenge Amick, but a week ago we were ambushed and surrounded by Amick's men. Big Daddy wanted to cover I ended up dying at their hands. Lu Chuang has already taken off the priest's black robe, but the aura of a super high school priest is still there, and this matter has been suppressed in his heart, Mingdi can't help but confide to Lu Chuang. Although she received a Spartan-style education since she was a child, she was still a child. Seeing her father die in front of her eyes was hard for an adult, let alone a little girl who was only 11 years old. Well, sure enough something went wrong. In fact, after finding out that Big Daddy was not there, Lu Chuang basically guessed what happened. Without dwelling on this topic, Lu Chuang asked, so, you issued this commission yourself? Well, I use the dark web left by Big Daddy to issue commissions, as for the reward. Mindy hesitated, and under the influence of Lu Chuang's super high school priest, she chose to believe Lu Chuang, saying, it's the stolen money that Big Daddy and I got from fighting criminals before. Big Daddy has already deposited this money into the account in advance, and I can use it as I like. Understood. Lu Chuang didn't continue to ask and simply said, then let's continue, what is the next test? No need, if it's you, there must be no problem. Mindy wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes. She was a strong little girl. The death of Big Daddy did not make her feel scared. Instead, she became more determined to kill Amic, the big enemy, and avenged her dead mother and Big Daddy. Mindy calmed down, and said with a serious expression, I've decided to hire you to help me kill Frank Atchin. Assist. Yes, regardless of my young age, I am very strong. Mindy was afraid that Lu Chuang would not believe it, so she raised her gun and aimed a few shots at the nearby target. It was originally the test content of Lu Chuang's next level, but now it became a prop for her to prove her strength. Lu Chuang took a look and hit the bullseye with his gun. It can be seen that the gun in Mindy's hand has also been modified, reducing the power and recoil, and improving the hit rate and stability, which is very suitable for a little girl like Mindy. After showing his strength, Mindy said to himself, as long as the two of us work together, we will definitely be able to kill that bastard Amic this time, and I have already found Amic's location, which is in a corner of the Bronx district. Inside the building, that surface is the top floor of the furniture company. Lu Chuang raised his hand, I want to ask, what is your plan? As a temporary worker hired by Mindy, out of professional ethics, Lu Chuang should have asked the boss about his request. It's very simple. When the time comes, I will disguise myself as a lost little girl, sneak into the building and kill the janitor, and then I will put you in and kill the top floor together. What a perfect plan, almost catching up with Wade. Lu Chuang thought for a while and said, I think this plan is good, but there is a little flaw. What blemish, the risk of exposure is too great and it may be discovered by the enemy at any time. Mindy shrugged his head. I know, but I have observed that building, it is full of Amix men, and there are cameras everywhere, it is too difficult for us to sneak in, so we can only adopt a storm strategy, as many as they can kill before they find out. In this case, why don't you listen to my next assassination plan? Assassination plan. Yes, it's the assassination plan. Lu Chuang showed a bright smile. Don't worry, the purpose of our mercenary service is to ensure the safety of the employer, but also to ensure that the employer can enjoy the most perfect killer experience. I have a one-stop supreme package for cremation. 
Are you interested? Learn about Amic Building. On the surface, is a furniture company, but secretly it is a drug trafficking organization used to sell drugs. And Frank Amick is the drug lord of this drug trafficking organization. In the office on the top floor of the building, Amick was sitting on an office chair with a large floor-to-ceiling window behind him. In the spacious room stood a circle of subordinates, all of whom were equipped with submachine guns. One of his subordinates is reporting. We didn't find the purple-haired masked girl, but I found out that someone posted a commission to kill you on the dark web recently, and it's very likely that the masked girl did it. Amick's face was full of indifference. It doesn't matter, anyway, that damn masked man is dead, what can a mere little girl do? As for the entrustment, there are a lot of people who want me to die, but I'm still alive and well now. Amick stood up and said viciously, if they really dare to come, I guarantee that they will never come back. I will inform the people on the first floor to be vigilant. If any strangers are found entering the building, especially little girls, they will be arrested immediately. Up BDED for interrogation. Okay, boss. Also, arrange more people to guard the office and protect me at all times to prevent someone from sneaking in to assassinate me. I don't believe it. I can kill me in the face of so many people. Okay, drawing board. Amic curled his lips in disdain. He didn't think anyone could kill him in such a heavily guarded building. Unless a whole team of heavily armed mercenaries was hired for a fire raid, it would be impossible for just a few people to break into the top floor of the building. Amic turned to face the floor-to-ceiling windows, overlooking the city below him, and he liked the condescending feeling. At this time, he felt a flash of white light, which made him squint his eyes subconsciously. What? Amic looked up, and there was also a tall building in the distance, and the roof was facing his direction. At the moment, a large and a small figure were standing on the rooftop. The taller figure held a sniper rifle in his hand and pointed it at his position. The white light just now was reflected from the lens of the magnifying glass. Boom! Accompanied by a dull impact, Amic couldn't help shaking. On the floor-to-ceiling window in front of him, a sniper bullet suddenly appeared, and the bullet got stuck in the thick glass, right on the forehead of Amic. It's a pity that the sniper bullet didn't penetrate the floor-to-ceiling window and was directly blocked in front of Amic. Amic was startled at first, then turned to the two figures opposite and laughed wantonly, ha ha ha, this piece of glass is made of special materials, even a grenade can't be blown up, just rely on you two idiots to think kill me and go dreaming. Boom, suddenly, there was another crash. Amic was horrified to find that the sniper bullet in front of him was hit by the sniper bullet behind and pushed forward a little bit, like a hammer hitting a nail, slowly driving the nail into the glass. Boom, like the knocking sound of death god, the sniper bullets gradually sank into the floor-to-ceiling windows, and the bullets almost came out of the glass. Under the threat of sniper bullets, Amic finally got scared and didn't dare to stand still. He ran to the back of the office and shouted, there is a killer on the other side call everyone to come up. Boom. At the moment, someone noticed that the sniper bullet had been completely drilled out, and nearly half of it was firmly stuck in the glass. In an instant, the sniper bullets burst into dazzling flames. Boom. With the deafening explosion, the floor-to-ceiling windows shattered into countless pieces. Everyone standing in the office could feel the gusts of wind pouring into the room like a tide at this moment, but the figure on the opposite rooftop suddenly put away the sniper rifle and pulled up a long banner, the words on it were clearly visible. Come on, let's shoot at the middle door. Too arrogant. Between the lines, even the punctuation marks reveal an extremely arrogant atmosphere. Amic blushed with anger, he didn't expect that the other party was even more arrogant than himself. You know, there are more than a dozen people here, but there are only two people on the opposite side. Even if this guy has a sniper rifle, within the range of less than 100 meters, the submachine gun in their hands can easily shoot to the rooftop. They can have an absolute advantage in terms of firepower alone. Why are the two of them so arrogant? But soon, Amic knew why. With the help of another person, the little figure moved a cylindrical weapon to the fixture, with huge amounts of holes facing the direction of the office. Amic and his subordinates can see that this is not a sniper rifle, it is clearly a rocket launcher. The FK is calling this a sniper. Maybe it was because the roof was a bit cold, the little figure sucked his nose and showed them a childlike smile. Then, without any hesitation, the launch button was pushed. Boom. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.